Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hello. Evening. Good afternoon. How's your day? How's life? How's your enjoyment upon this plane of existence? Tell me all about it. <laughs> How's it going? Anyway. <laughs> I just start I just start saying stuff and then I don't know what to say. I feel like all those like seconds I'm just like waiting to like hit like on mute and just start talking. I should maybe think of what I'm gonna say. And yet I never do. Um <laughs> And yet I never do. Ah Ah There we go. Anyway Anyway How's your day been? I'm sorry for the two days I've been missing. I'm also sorry because the weekend might also be difficult because uh, I have a thing uh, that I'm going to Sunday and I'm not sure what that's going to look like weekend specter, but I'll be sure to let you know Friday. Um, but time goes. But uh, for the rest of the week before the weekend, it should be fine. It should be all good. Um, but yeah, let's talk, let, let's talk about some random stuff. I want, actually, I do want to talk about something. It's very, a very soft conversation topic, but I do really want to talk about it. The October prompts, the froggy fall, like, prompt list. I'm having far too much fun. I'm having far too much, oh my god. I'm having far too much fun. I'm like, I'm having far too much fun. I'm having far, far, far too much fun. Um, I'm just genuinely excited. I can't even remember what tomorrow's one is. I'm gonna check like right now. I'm gonna check like right now. Actually. Cozy tree. Ooh. I'll see what I'll see what I can do. <laughs> so I didn't do the art thing today and yesterday. Some pretty major things happened, and I'll hopefully be able to do the art again starting tomorrow. And I'll do the art that I missed probably in the weekend. That's totally fine. Like a lot of these art prompts. Like, lists are, like, like, they can be difficult to get in the, like, because it's, like, one art, like, artwork, like, every day. No, no matter what the medium is, it's still kind of, like, a push, like, on your part to, like, make it happen. And sometimes stuff gets in the way, or, like, a day can be busier than other. Like, missing a day is completely fine. Like, and, and on a lot of these, like, the people who make the prompt list say that you can choose, like, as many days as you want. I know that there's some prompt lists, um, that, that there's some that the, like, creators of the prompt list, like, tell you that you can, like, pick certain days and not do every day. You can do as many or as few as you want. And then there's others. Did it reload? Yeah, it did. Um, <laughs> there's the music. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I'll get back into my ramble in a minute. And I know that there's others... That are like, um, quote unquote, like more loose when there's like one every weekend. There's like a lot. I like them. Well, I like the prom list a lot. I just like doing them. I've been doing them since like, I don't know, 2016, 2017, 2016, something like that. It's the first time. Not all of them were like posted online, basically, but like, um, I just did them for like myself. So. <laughs> they're fun i like them plus it gets me in the 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 reason why like i'm fine with the like october ones um is because i'm just generally very hyped about october so being um uh, so getting more hyped stuff for october is fun for me i just like doing stuff in october which speaking of stuff to do in october i still haven't decorated and i bought two more th like things to decorate today I got a new, like, it's like black cats kind of, like, thing. And, uh, it got one of the painting, like, pump, like, the little, like, candle pot things, uh, that are, like, pumpkin shaped that you can paint. I got one of those too, because I wanted, I wanted to do some painting. Um, and I haven't painted, like, anything. I, I haven't painted anything in, like, forever so it's gonna give me an excuse to grab a paintbrush so i want to so i'm gonna paint a pumpkin candle holder it's gonna be fun <laughs> it's gonna be fun and i'm decoration that's okay too 
I just, I, I don't know when I'm gonna put it up because I was thinking about keeping it up for like the rest of, like having it up like the first day and then not keeping it and, and then keeping it up for like the rest of the month, but I'm not sure. I might, actually we're decorating for something this Saturday, so I'll probably have to wait till like after that. We have something going on. So yeah, maybe after that. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. It's there. At least for Halloween, it'll be there. It'll be there for Halloween, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Which means I need to dig stuff out. I like this lo-fi song. <laughs> I just think it's neat. I like the one that uh, played in the... What you call it? The starting soon. Today. I kind of picked down a whim and I couldn't remember which one it was. I just knew it was one of the new ones. And I went, yeah, sure. I like it. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed it. I was listening. I, I was just listening to them while I'm like tweeting out and stuff. I enjoyed it. It was nice. I mean, I picked it. So like one would think that I picked it because I liked it. <laughs> one, one would assume so. <laughs> anyway, I like nothing else really to talk about. Nothing's really happened. I bought a virtual book. Despite not having finished the physical book I bought a while ago, I haven't finished it. Uh, and yeah, I still bought a book. Because yes. Well, I asked, like, well, I mentioned wanting it and someone bought it for me. But, um, still. <laughs> but still, that's something. And I don't know, that's about it. My voice being really bad today, so hopefully I won't suddenly be gone, but who knows. Alright. Which is probably a good segue, too. <laughs> this is probably a good segue, too, considering I don't really have much to talk about, as I've established. <laughs> really, nothing interesting's happened. Like, I've been, like, like, yesterday I had something to do, but, like, that wasn't very interesting. And Sunday, like, there was people over, and that's why I didn't stream. Like, I didn't do anything, like, mildly interesting the last few two days for it to be, like... Uh, for like the justification of not streaming, it was just like people get uh, people coming over and like having to go out to do something, and that's it. It was just, it was like I, and it was like the time that the people that could do like do it. So it was like okay, well dang it. <laughs> so I'm getting a free cupcake at my school tomorrow. I hope it's a good cupcake. Ooh, a l reason number one that cupcakes are great is the frosting part. I just like frosting. I just like stuff with frosting. Or like just any kind of like, you know those like, I'm, this is going off the realm of cupcakes, but you know those number cakes? Well, we do them with cookies, but you know those like number things and you like grab like the cake or like the two cookies and then in between you put like buttercream or like frosting and then you can like put fruits between them as well. I just like it because you get to eat a lot of buttercream. <laughs> And also the cookie part is great too, but buttercream. <laughs> buttercream. Buttercream. I love buttercream. I like sweet things. Sometimes. Other times I just get really sick of them very quickly. It dep it really depends on my mood, I guess. Also, your school exists for uh 350 years? Wow. I don't know how long this any of the schools I went to last time. I'm kind of curious now. I'm gonna Google a thing. I'm Googling. Um, I'm checking two. I only, I don't only really care about two of them. Well, not, not like care care, but like, um, I just want to know how long it's been. When did you open? When did you start? When did you start? About us, I guess? Where would you find this? You? I guess? I don't know. No. Wrong. <laughs> How long? I'm not doing this the correct way, I'm pretty sure. And is there like a Wikipedia? I think there is. Hold. 
Yes. When did you open? Not that long ago. <laughs> well, relatively long ago, but not that long ago. When I'm curious about another one. Uh, can I find a Wikipedia about you? I just want to know which one's been on longer. That's all I really care about. That's what I'm just looking for. I'll a answer the question real quick, but I just want to know. Uh... Where do I find you? It's history. That probably is there. Right? From its beginnings doesn't tell me when the beginnings was. Oh, okay. This one's gone on longer. My most recent, like, school was the one that's, la that's like, opened before the other one. That's all I care about. Um, <laughs> that's all I really wanted to know. Thank you. Which is, uh, you've been on for 50 years, while the other one's been on for 30 years. Almost 31. Pretty sure. <laughs> My math should be correct there. <laughs> its origin can be traced even further back to a church and- What? That's so cool! Like, in a weird way, like that- wow. <laughs> That's interesting. But the fact that it's lasted so long is kind of just impressive. Anything that lasts a very, very long time is just genuinely impressive to me. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Either way, Either way, you're getting a cupcake, so I call that wins. Also, I love that I had to Google how many, like, years, like, my previous, like, my most recent school was, like, uh, like, opened for, despite the fact that it's been exactly 50 years and I was, like, for the 50, like, celebration thing. Like, it's been, like, I was, like, Kurt when they did the 50-year thing. I just forgot about that. That's how much of an impact it left in my life. I forgot about it. <laughs> Church was built in uh, 26. Uh, wow, this is a colorful history. 09, then rebuilt in 42 to 48. Wow. <laughs> you've got like, you've got like history, like so much history there. Again, that's really impressive. Like, kind of cool, because I bet there's, like, a lot of, like, his like history there, I guess. I don't know. That's pretty cool, I guess. Anyway. <laughs> colorful, colorful history aside. I had, like, no colorful history to share about anything in particular. I'm not big on history. I wish I was. <laughs> but I just don't. I just not. But that's pretty cool. Anyway, I feel like this- I said I was gonna segue before, and then I got sidetracked again. It always happens, consistently. Wouldn't- would it be one of- the, would it be me if it didn't happen? Segway to... Boop! <laughs> Boop! There we go. There we go. And why- I didn't- there we go. There we go. Yeah? Yeah? Me being paranoid. Yeah, there we go. Good. Good. You're alive. Awesome. So, last time, long boy stream, we did a lot. <laughs> Je quote unquote a lot. It was a lot considering a usual day. So, what would be the ideal, like, situation? Do, do these three. Do I have full faith that that's gonna happen? No. But I'd like to suspend my disbelief and hope for the best. Yeah? Yeah. Um, so, last time we ended on boating, which kind of broke my, what do you call? <laughs> which kind of broke my, like, general rule of, um... <laughs> my brain is, like, 50 places at once. It's like my brain finished the sentence already, and I'm, like, in the middle of it, and then I just get confused. And so I just pause. And I just pause. Uh, 
which kind of broke my general rule of wanting to end on like one of these so we could like start with a DLC one. But this time, I don't really mind because I like I like charity a lot. It was one of my favorites, so I'm excited about playing charity. <laughs> so I'm okay with this. I'm actually fine with start, and I'm actually excited about starting with this one. I'm excited about playing all of them, but I just usually like like starting with a DLC one because it's like new and I haven't seen it. Um, so I'm just curious, but um, I'm to I'm but this time I just kind of want to relive charity again. <laughs> so oh joy, I'm gonna take a sip of water before we start. <laughs> oh joy, I drink so much water during these. I just get every time I get like mildly distracted, I just want I just go back to water. <laughs> just happens. Just happens. Film. The blinding white light. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. Back to reading. I can do this. I can do this. Hide myself up. Boop, boop. Bill pushed himself to his feet from where he had uh, been bent down in the sand, stretching out his back and groaning softly. A tired breath slipped past uh, his lips as he wiped his brow, looking out over the shore. The shore. <sighs> it looks great. You stood beside him, joining in, in the surveying of the sand that almost seemed to sparkle beneath the midday sun. The two of you had been out on the beach since sunrise, cleaning up and down the beach looking for various debris, and the work had paid off. Using a hand to shield your eyes from blinding rays, you glanced across the way where the other volunteers from Orca were gathered. They were easily recognizable by the high-vis vest they wore. It looked as though everyone uh, was about ready to wrap things up for the day. I'm happy to see it in a better state. I'm exhausted. I'm just glad it's almost over. It, it, I'm glad to see it in a great, better state. That's what we came here to do, nah? It was pretty sad. Look, ah, I almost threw my mic. I nudged it and I caught it just in time. Don't fall. Don't fall. <laughs> Don't fall. <laughs> it was pretty sad looking when we got here. There we go. The beaches uh, of this town were practically your own, per your own personal backyard, and you visited them a lot. It felt good knowing that you were helping to take care of them. Hmm, too bad not everyone sees the joy in putting trash where it belongs. Oh well. Coop placed his hands on his hips, a pleased grin pulling at the corners of his mouth as he admired the work you'd both done. You had begun to realize during your time volunteering for the organization how seriously Cove took his service. It was easy to, uh, to see that it was something important, important to him. Again, my brain is like at the end of the sentence, while my mouth is only at like at the like halfway through it. <laughs> ah! You felt equally as invested and always giving your best efforts. You enjoyed the work, but mostly wanted to have a good time. Miranda was right; you volunteered because it was good reference. You didn't want to be here, but you didn't know how to turn it down. Nah, it's good to do this kind of stuff. Beach beach cleaning is it feels very rewarding. I guess is the way to put it. It's just nice. Just like most charity work in general, this feels like nice to, you just like, it feels kind of like edifying to do. Like don't do it for the sake of just feeling like good about yourself, but it's like, feels nice to be able to do something good. There you go. It's just nice to be able to help with something. <laughs> it was important that the ocean you grew up uh, with was protected. It had always been a big, uh, big part of your life and you felt that the least you could do was give back to it in some way. Ace. Poetic. Hey, nice work. Thank you. Thanks. There we go. It's been a good year so far. It's crazy to think that it's already time to push the big event. You let out a big breath, thinking of the formal dinner that Orca organized every year. I still can't get over how nice, the, the, how satisfying this is as an, as an acronym. Being a complete, uh, completely fundraising focused event for large donors, it was crucial for the organization's project, uh, projects in the year to come. You had to be over 18 to attend, so this was your first opportunity to actually see it in person. All you had heard about it so far was that it was prim and proper, it was a prim and proper occasion with speeches and everything. What is happening? <laughs> okay, sorry. Hold on, give me two seconds. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> there we go. I was so confused. <laughs> Never mind. There we go. We can continue now. You didn't know what else to expect from it as you weren't a part of the group who planned the evening. 
I feel like I could have fun like planning an event. I just like planning stuff. I like no. Sort of. I like some parts of planning stuff. Other parts are generally stressful. But other parts of it are really fun to plan. But I must have yes, I like hunting stuff. So pity. <laughs> Before the big night came around, the volunteers would have to sell the tickets for it, and that's where you'd be helping. That's also fine. I've done kind of that kind of stuff for like school before. It was fun. We sold uh, bookmarks once, uh, and we sold like bookmarks and books. I remember that, and I'm sure I've done another thing, and I can't remember it. <laughs> my bra and my brain, uh, my brain is drawing out a blank. But I'm sure. <laughs> I'm so excited to go. I'm nervous about the event. I don't really want to go. I'm curious about the night. You shocked. I'm curious. It might be fun. I've never been to a professional type party. Goof nodded, though he still seemed reluctant. I mean. I just don't feel excited about attending a super formal meal with proper etiquette and stuff, you know? He threw his arms out to the side, making a bit of a show of how ridiculous it seemed to him. Hi, Ali. I've got sand all over my room and only one nice shirt, and I go barefoot pretty much where uh, whenever I can. I'm gonna be so out of place. Uh, right, I, I bet you'd rather stay out here. I don't want to have to worry about manners. You can make it work for one night. Doing something that, fanc uh, that fancy will make it fun. You have the definition amount of- is there, you didn't say anything. Um... <laughs> honestly, yeah. I like some aspects of the fancy stuff. And then other aspects of the fancy stuff, I'm just not... Nah, nah, nah. I was talking... A few streams ago, I was talking about the whole elbows on the table thing. I do it unconsciously. I'm kind of glad that I grew up in a space that it that no one really cared about it that much. Um, Like, the, the, we're like... Being generally respectful, uh, like, having general manners is fine, but not to the intensity, like, where that would seem like a... <gasps> shocked gasp kind of thing because i do so many things that which i probably shouldn't be doing if i was following like proper etiquette just without realizing it so yeah accurate what if they have one th more than one fork like in the movies and i have to pick the right one what am i supposed to do then like in a typical random person who isn't a member of royalty gets swooped in into a life where they are a person of royalty and then they're just very confused <laughs> like one of those movies <laughs> you grin at the thought dragging your feet through the sand while cove chuckled at the thought a small beeping noise came from cove's pan pocket and he pulled it out uh, and glanced at the screen huh hi indeed it's the organizers they've sent a text to the group time to call it a day here all right ready to uh ready to head to our next activity Cook talked to Salaway eagerly, turning to you. Let's head over and drop the trash bags off at the trucks. Then we can drive back and join uh, join the ticket team. We've got uh, we got to be there pretty soon to uh, to relieve them. With a stretch of shore this long, the plan was to switch places with the other uh, with the other team who had been uh, pushing the tickets for the fundraising dinner halfway through. Uh, can't keep game. But there we go. <laughs> It would be a full day of work, but it was Orca's largest event of the year, and all hands were on deck to make sure it was a success. Uh, you raise your hand for a high five, uh, you nudge your shoulder against Cove, you started pushing Cove back uh, on the back to move forward, you ran off, you started to walk. High fives for funsies. Kinda like manners because they're like a guide to humans, but you shouldn't take it too far. Agreed. Manners, I'm good at it, and I care, and I care like my uh, like outside of my house. But here, it's just like, yeah, let me relax and just be a human. Exactly, very true. And the comforts of one's own home, it's like, eh, <laughs> like I just chill and relax. Like no, like not, not n no one, like n no one's getting like a high expectation. Like the expectation is your own expectation about yourself, and that's it. So. But like humanly not running away, of course. Preferably, yes. Um, first use what's on your plate, then work from the outside to the inside and what's uh, above your plate, roughly. <laughs> Damn, that's a good tip, though. You can always cheat by looking what other shoes. Yes! Uh, uh, if you're confused by a situation and you're not sure what you're supposed to be doing, glance around. Like, 
awkwardly laugh at something or continue a conversation so it seems like you're not doing the thing immediately because you're distracted by a conversation you're having or like something else um and then once you've realized what other people are doing then you can start and do it <laughs> pro tip ah <laughs> uh. Ghost Bomb slaps uh, solidly against yours, and he smiled at you crookedly. You collected the trash bags spread along the way together, heading across uh, the beach to hoist them into, into the trucks before heading off to the next job. Ghost slipped his uh, warm hand into yours, and you, inter uh, and you intertwined your fingers, strolling back uh, to the car side by side. Car. The drive back to your neighborhood and making your way to the shopping street. I'm about to throw the trash can underneath my desk. Because I was nudging it with my feet. There we go. Um, uh, the drive back to your neighborhood and making your way to the shopping street was fairly quick. Though Cove stressed a little about being late. Luckily, he was able to find a par uh, parking spot nice and close to where you needed uh, you needed to be. You jumped out of the car and quickly went towards uh, where you knew the group would be. Finally reaching the stall that was set up to sell tickets, you stopped for a moment to catch your breath. That was quite the flurry of activity. It would be your job for the rest of the afternoon to help sell tickets for, this fun, uh, for the fundraising dinner. And looking around the street, you saw that there were plenty of potential buyers out today. That would, uh, that would hopefully help to move the tickets along. The stall itself was simple. A portable table with a few plush sea animals as decorations and a banner stuck across the front. I like our plush sea animals. Uh, there were two volunteers who were already packing up and getting ready to head off to the beach. Uh, they gave both of you a uh, friendly smile as you arrived. Hey, Cove, Ace, uh, how did things go at the beach? Not bad. It was good. The place is looking great. We're lucky to get a two for one when it comes to you guys. Cove cleared his throat awkwardly from beside you and you notice his cheeks flushing pink. Here we go again. Uh, you laughed it off. That's right, that's us. You felt your own cheeks get hotter. Their uh, teasing rubbed you the wrong way. You shrugged it off. Laughing it off is probably the best way we can do it. We're always happy to be of service. Well, we're happy to have you around. Gov seemed to relax a little more after that, giving the volunteers a small smile. The volunteers made room for you and Cove behind the table while they circled around to the front of it. Thanks for coming in for a shift. We'd better make this quick so we can head off uh, to the next place. No problem. What do you need us to do? We're ready for whatever is needed. One of the volunteers handed you a clipboard with all the details needed to sell tickets, while the other tossed a set of keys to Cove, which he caught with ease. Uh, those are for the money box and supply kit. Make sure to keep them on you at all times. Aside from handling the cash for the tickets, there's also a form on the clipboard for guests to fill in their info. Uh, that way we know how many tickets we've sold and who will be attending the event. Sounds simple enough. There's a small script beneath that if you guys stuck for what to say, and that's about it. Pretty simple, huh? Uh-huh. I think we've got this. Uh, satisfied that you knew what you were doing, the volunteers said their goodbyes and started walking away, leaving you, leaving you and Cove to manage the stall alone. The keys jingled in his hand as Cove waved them off before he stuffed, uh, stuffed them into the pocket of his pants for safekeeping. You gave them a small wave goodbye as they left. Uh, once the volunteers were out of sight, Cove dropped down into a, uh, into a chair behind the counter with a sigh. We made it here just in time. It's cool we traded places with nothing happening. They might have been uh, late getting to cleanup duty. He leaned back in his seat, getting fully comfortable in the space, and gave you a small smile. Why is the music so loud, homie? In my ears. Wow! Shh, there we go, there we go. Why are you so loud? There we go. <laughs> there we go. You took the other seat. It was just a simple plastic chair that squeaked when you sat on it, but it gave you a good view of the street, so it all works out. Uh, we got this under control. I was so stressed about getting here. Things could still go wrong. I'm glad this work lets us at least rest in one place. You rubbed out your eyes tiredly. You returned a smile. Um, ba -ba 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 return. Yep. It had been a bit of a mad rush to get here, but everything had turned out all right in the end. Uh, Cove rummaged around the station a little, picking up a stuffed toy orca and holding it up, uh, up in front of his face. You had to admit that it was pretty cute, with its big bulging eyes and oversized flippers. Stuffed animals are adorable. <laughs> Uh, setting it back down on the top of the table, Cove moved on to check out the rest of the stall, finding a cooler stashed beneath the table. When he pulled it out and opened the lid, you could see that it was filled with half-melted ice cubes and about a half a dozen bottles of water. Hydrate! <laughs> 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 
Grabbing one of the plastic bottles, he unscrewed the cap and took a long drink. He watched the condensation running around, uh, along the side and onto his fingers. So? You want one? Gov set his uh, water on his side of the table before pulling out another, holding it out towards you. You accepted the water bottle, I brought my own thanks. No, I'm not thirsty. I'm accepting the water bottle. Just took a drink, I well anyway. <laughs> thanks. After opening it up, you took a drink and let out a satisfied sigh. You hadn't realized how thirsty you had been, and it, and it, is, it was always good to stay hydrated. The two of you got settled in easily, and you took the chance to look over the paperwork on the clipboard. Uh, Cook joined you, leaning over your shoulder to get a better look. Hmm. Seems like pretty standard stuff. He muttered, and you nodded quietly. It had general info about the event and the work you needed to do at the stall, as well as the amount of tickets sold thus far and the number remaining. Cove tapped a finger on the counter as he read quietly over the notes, muttering a few things now and then that you didn't fully hear. He seemed content to be there, and you were sure that the afternoon would pass by quickly. When he glanced out towards the crowd and made, uh, and made a small sound, he followed his line of sight to see that a potential supporter was on their way over to the booth. Uh, you set yourself up. You were feeling anxious. It was time to do customer service. <laughs> uh, you tried to relax a bit. This is going to be a pain. You quietly continued checking over the papers. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Customer service. So, uh, this could be your first ticket sale of the day. You had to give it, a, uh, give it all you had to make sure the event was a success. Hi, how are you doing today? I still find it strange that they use plastic water bottles. So do I, as a just purely reusable water bottle user. I have this one that has like the measurements on the side and then I have uh, small ones. Uh, this one's transparent, like black transparent-ish. And then I have one, like the bedside table one is uh, not transparent and it's smaller than this one and has like art around it. So it's like got a design on it and everything. Uh, and this is like one of the ones that uh, you like open with a button. It has like a lid. And then the other one's just like a screw-on lid, like a like a bottle, like a plastic bottle. Just got a lid. Took it off. Me describing my water bottles because clearly, <laughs> clearly content. <laughs> Back to the customer service. Time passed as the two of you ma uh, manned the stall, and as people approached, your sales pitch would either have them asking for a ticket or two, or heading off and mumbling, maybe next time. All in all, you managed to sell a decent amount of tickets, and you could tell that Cove was happy with the outcome. Ooh, sunset. As the afternoon drifted along, 6 p.m. arrived. Time to pack everything up and head home for the evening. Uh, your work with Orca was far from over, but right now there was only one thing left to focus on, attending the actual event. Uh, the days continued on in a normal flow, and uh, the days continued on in a normal flow, and before long, the night of the Orca fundraising dinner was upon you. It was nearly evening, and you were in your room getting ready as the minutes uh, ticked closer and closer towards the time you needed to leave. Uh, you wanted some privacy, so you had locked yourself away in your room. Liz was helping you pick an outfit. Cove was on speakerphone. This was helping you get ready while Cove was on speakerphone. We're doing that. Fun. We're having everyone over. <laughs> You're currently in the midst of picking an outfit, which Liz was helping you with while Cove gave his input from the phone. <laughs> because I care about these two people's opinion. And <laughs> because I trust their- I trust their judgment. These two, I trust their judgment. Of course, Cope couldn't see any of the items uh, you and Liz were choosing between, but he was trying to help all the same. And the attention is what counts. Uh, the event had strict guidelines and you wouldn't be let in unless you were dressed to code. That meant having to find a truly professional outfit, but one that you were also happy with. Which is easy enough considering I like fancy clothing. You were happy to have the chance to dress fancy, you wanted to be practical about it, you weren't uh, happy about having to dress up. I like dressing fancy. There were a couple of outfits that didn't get us uh, nearly as much use as you would as you would have liked, and now is the time to show them off. You smiled as you picked your way through the items, your excitement shining bright. That's fine. You don't need to get it too into your head uh, thinking about the look, but you do need to hurry up and pick something. At this rate, you're gonna have a better uh, better time picking out your outfit than the party itself. But whatever you go with, it'll be great. Uh, aren't you helpful, Liz? Don't push me, Liz. Thanks for uh, talking it through with me. Oh, I never would have uh, thought I'd see the day when o Holden would encourage me to wear something formal. You laughed a little, you shook your head. I'm just laughing. It really shouldn't be this difficult to pick something out, and yet it always is, and you just need uh, to take the plunge and do it. Taking a deep breath to refocus yourself, you looked over the options uh, one last time. It was time to decide on an outfit and quick, which is hard because I'm 
indecisive. But I think I know what I'm gonna pick in this particular scenario. You chose a dress, you chose a button. Ah, my voice. You chose a button down shirt and pants, you chose a blouse and pants, you chose a button down shirt and a skirt, you chose a blouse and a skirt. I'm going with the button down shirt and pants. I was between the uh, button down shirt and pants and the button down shirt and a skirt, but I'm going with the pants right now. I'm in that mood right now. Can I go on video call? Hashtag video call for go. Can our phones do video calls, please? <laughs> like. <laughs> Liz nodded in, appro in approval, clapping her hands together, satisfied. Good. Finally, we're making some progress. Mm. Mm, that sounds like it'll, uh, it'd be totally fine. I'm wearing the same type of thing. Standing in front of your mirror, you quietly assess your outfit. Is this where I can pick stuff? <gasps> yes, accessories! It needed a little something extra to finish it all off. Uh, rummaging through the rest of your wardrobe, you picked out what you uh, needed to complete your outfit. This is important content. I want a button best. I like bests. I like bests a lot. I was just thinking about the- I was just thinking about bests uh, today. I have like one button best and I really really like it. It's just a normal black button best, but I just enjoy it. It looks nice. So yes, best. Thank you. <laughs> it was a formal event after all, and you couldn't think of a better time to wear it. Uh, necklace, bracelet, watch, a belt. We could take a belt, sure. You slipped the belt around your waist and fastened the buckle, nodding at your reflection and approval. Uh, we're going with a pair of earrings, because I usually wear earrings for fancy stuff. Uh, you heard, uh, you heard to put on a pair of, e of earrings to match your outfit, aware that time was running short. <laughs> and I should really speed this along. Uh, we're not doing a tie. We're keeping it. Uh, and any other, like, uh, eh, we're fine. <laughs> and with that, you decided to apply makeup. You asked Liz if she could put your makeup on for you. Uh, in most of the cases, I would, uh, uh, especially if it's like, an or an event, I'm like okay with like telling someone else and asking. Plus, I'm never gonna take it. I'm never gonna not say no to an opportunity of getting someone to put makeup on me. Hmm. Leaning up in front of the mirror again, you spoke over your shoulder. Do you think you could help me with some makeup for tonight? Absolutely. I'll show you everything I know. You're welcome for that. Can Can you give me eyeliner tips for my hooded eyes? <laughs> I've sort of figured it out over the years, but I'd still like to know more. <laughs> With that, Liz uh, really got into gear. She worked uh, deftly to apply all the details without holding you up too long, all while keeping you informed of what was happening on your face, which is nice. Finally, you were dressed. It had all come together. Okay, just gotta change my shirt and then I'll be at the car. See you in a minute. When you looked at Liz again, she got a goofy smile pulling at her lips. You look very nice, Ace. Thank you. Uh, you twisted around in your outfit excitedly. I do look good, don't I? Now you're, ta uh, you're talking like our moms. You blushed and smiled at the, com at the compliment. Thank you. And thanks for helping me out. I'm sure it wasn't easy. Liz laughed softly and ruffled your hair, but only barely. Not enough to actually mess it up. <laughs> You've got that one right, but you know I'm here whenever you need it. Liz wiped a pretend tear away, away with her finger, sniffling dramatically. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, precious Ace, you're really all grown up. It happened in the blink of an eye when I wasn't even looking. <laughs> she chuckled to herself, nudging you towards the door. All right. Time to get downstairs. You're very official, though it's still kind of baby boyfriend awaits. <laughs> you carefully headed down the stairs and into the living room where your moms were waiting, uh, were waiting for your appearance. Moms. As you entered, they both stood uh, from the couch and came over to you, smiling broadly. You look so wonderful, Ace. <laughs> nice. And very mature, too. Mm-hmm. I know, right? <laughs> they continued to coo and foss over you until you managed to brush them off. Mom took Mom by the arm and held her close, the two of them admiring you proudly. Uh, you enjoyed the attention. Thank you. You sighed dramatically. I already got this from Liz. You wonder why they were making such a big deal. Uh, thank you. It felt a little strange to have everyone's attention on you, but you liked it nonetheless. It's fine enough. Uh, Liz smiled at you from where she stood, her expression soft. 
Ma came in to give you one last hug, and before you knew it, another pair of arms was wrapped around you, and then a third. Both Mom and Liz giggled as they hugged you tight. We hope you, ha we hope you have so much fun tonight. Have fun. We won't wait up for you. Stay out uh, as long as you need. If you're old enough now. Uh, with the last wave goodbye, you left your family and approached the front door. It was time. Stepping out into the night, you closed the door behind you gently and looked out across the street. The shirt! I really just genuinely love the pattern of the shirt, and it just looks so good. I want a waistcoat, but modern ones aren't really as cool as historical ones aren't, like, really available, and I'm not good enough at sewing to make them. A historical waistcoat would be so cool to own. I totally agree. I'd love to have a historical waistcoat. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, Ko was standing there in the street. His eyes met yours immediately, as if uh, he had been watching your house for the moment. Uh, for the moment, you would come out. He smiled bashfully. Hey, <laughs> hi. You took the chance to check over his outfit as he walked across the way. Uh, the way to meet you. It was formal for sure, though it didn't feel overly posh. It made sense for him and was honestly a sight for sore eyes. He was always beautiful to you. That is true. With a growing smile, he stepped closer, his cheeks reddening all the way down to his neck. Thank you. Uh, for coming with me and for dressing really nicely for this. Your outfit is- it's just perfect. Thank you, you felt really shy, you look amazing tonight. Oh, hot right now, you said flirtatiously, you sharked. You look amazing. Compliments back. You glanced over, uh, over him from head to toe, uh, no- ah. Noting that his shirt, pants, and shoes were all shiny and new. He had put in the effort and it showed. He couldn't uh, stop himself from looking down in order to inspect his outfit, now that you pointed it out, uh, and to avoid having to face you directly after after you did. But turning away did nothing to disguise how transparently pleased he was with the compliment. What kind of historical waistcoat do you want? I like, I'm not good with like names of stuff, but I just li listen. Let me try to look for like a good picture and then I'll try to describe it. <laughs> but I just think it would look really cool. I've just seen like stuff. Victorian era. Ah, yes. <gasps> just, oh my god, it's so pretty. Victorians are, uh, let me look for it specifically. Oh my god, they're so beautiful. You know the ones where like, um,. One of the side, like one of the sides, like goes over the other one. So it got like two sets of buttons. That looks so cool. That looks generally so cool. Love it. Like that crisscross kind of thing. It's so awesome. I like when they have like discrete kind of patterns. It looks really nice. Just, oh my God. I like fancy buttons as well. <laughs> Just, ah, uh, so pretty. <laughs> now I'm scrolling through pictures, just admiring. <laughs> Thank you. Then he shook his head, glanced back towards the, uh, the garage, and throwing a thumb over his shoulder, spoke. Come on. We should probably get going. Wouldn't want, uh, wouldn't want to be late to such a grown-up event, right? Yeah, let's go. You headed over to Coast Car together, hopping in and strapping on your seatbelts. You were on your way. The event was being held at a place you had never been to before. You brought up the location on your phone and helped Cove navigate there. Okay, our phones have like a Google Maps equivalent. There's no way our phones can't do like a video call. <laughs> it took some time to find the right address and once uh, once there you, uh, you were met with the task of finding a parking spot. Though you were on time, it seemed like everyone else had already showed, uh, shown up and claimed the, sp uh, the spaces. So basically, you're also talking more like Victorian era. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, looked up Victorian era, like, waistcoats, and yeah, that's definitely, like, what I'm, like, talking about. It looks so cool! Love them. Love them so much. It's so awesome. <laughs> Eventually, you found a suitable place before realizing that it required payment. Cove covered the amount, taking a ticket from the machine and leaving it on the dashboard of the car. Ooh, I love how pretty this looks. I love it. Despite the small holdup, you managed to ultimately make it to the event and confirm you were on the guest list before uh, being shown into the dining area, which is so pretty! Oh. 
It's so pretty. Ko whistled low as he looked around, taking in the extravagance of the room. Chandeliers hung from the ceiling, and the entire place was decked out with beautiful oceanic displays. You were stunned yourself. It was extremely high class, even more so than, uh, than you had already expected. But it looks so pretty. It's so nice. This is the best looking event I've ever been to. It's way too frilly for me. It's so redundant. Could be worse. You didn't comment. This is the best looking event I've ever been to. Look at how pretty this is. That's a lie for IRL me, but it's still very, very pretty. Your uh, lips parted in a wondrous smile as you took in the decorations and the guests all dressed to the nines. Ko met your eyes with a similar look on his face. You got the impression that he felt uh, the same way about it all. Uh, ooh, I'll look it up, queen. Let me see. Uh, ba 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 Bernadette Banners. Sherlock. I'll look it up. I'll find it. I'll find it. <gasps> oh my god! It is so cool! Oh, I love it! Oh, it's so awesome! I love it so much. It's so cool. It looks so good. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it, that. <laughs> Go met your eyes with a similar look on his face. You got the impression that he felt the same way about it all. The sound of your names being called out echoed over the din, uh, the din in the room. When you looked around, you recognized a couple of the organization leaders looking your way. They approached you both in greeting, giving you a welcoming smile and a hello. Uh, leader number one. She's a historian who recreates historical clothing. That's awesome. I'm gonna scroll through her things. Cause, like, through her stuff. Cause that- I enjoyed that and I kinda wanna see, like, more of it. Cause that's really, really cool. Um, I'll check out some of the stuff. It looks so cool. I like it. Yeah, I'll probably check a lot of this stuff out. I didn't know about this. But this is really, really cool. Really, really cool. <laughs> I didn't know, but now I'm like, so interested. <laughs> I'll be checking- I'll be checking a lot of those out. Uh, now let's read leader one. Uh, Cove, Ace, uh, we're glad to see- uh, to see you could make it, especially after all the hard work you've done to help, uh, make this night happen. Of course. Definitely, I wasn't gonna miss it. Uh, hi, you said, uh, you say that as if we had a choice, I wouldn't miss it either. Hello, I'm thrilled to have made it. Yeah. Uh, the place looks amazing. It's so nice to do something like this. Well, thank you for being a part of the team. Uh, you're best power couple, that's for sure. You're all, you're always uh, welcome to participate in more activities uh, when they come up. Go let out an awkward, breathy laugh and rub the back of his neck. Um, thanks. Go Shrek then, are you starting around the place with an awkward look? So... I guess we should talk to more people. There isn't much else to do at an event like this. Uh, you find your way into groups of people who are standing around chatting while some light music played in the background. Uh, servers with large silver trays were gliding between guests offering drinks and canapes. Uh, Ko approached various, uh, uh, various people as you wound your way through the guests. He managed, uh, broaching new conversations well. You weren't so good in social situations yourself, so mostly followed Kova around and joined in on his conversations. Luckily, everyone there, uh, there that night was polite. Uh, the sound of a microphone crackling came from the podium at the other end of the room. Uh, someone who you assumed must be the host for the evening was asking everyone to sit down in preparation for the meal and speeches. You and Cove looked for your table, finding it easy enough by the little name cards that were placed delicately beside the napkins. A few others joined you at the table, though they weren't anyone that you recognized. The host was still uh, speaking as people were settling, starting off the speeches by giving a welcome to everyone attending. She went on to provide some more information about Orca, which he supposed was for the guests who weren't a part of the organization, and the purpose of the fundraiser tonight. 
Orca's goals, as she explained it, were to aid in the conservation and restoration of oceans and beaches. Uh, there were many people who had helped to make the group as, as successful as it was. Once she read off a list of several volunteers who worked on making the event happen, Cove's name was one of the first to come up. His chest puffed out in pride at that. Uh, your name then came up a little further down the list. You were smiling from year to year at the mention. As she continued on to thank the large donors for the event, you checked over at Cove. He was still grinning happily to himself and tapping his fingers over the tops of his knees, pretty pleased to have been mentioned by name. You laughed quietly at his reaction, you rolled your eyes, you were excited for him, you could relate to that feeling, you tried to keep focus on the speech. Um, bup, 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 bup. Excited! He had worked so hard to make this event happen, it was the least that he deserved. Uh, while the host continued speaking, multiple servers dressed in black were setting the first course of the menu in front of guests. One of the servers set down a plate in front of you and you thanked them quietly before looking over the dish with interest. You recognized the dish as a simple Caesar salad. The host quickly wrapped up uh, the end of her speech, thanking everyone once more before inviting you all to begin your meal. Anyone who had included a, a special uh, a dietary note when signing up for the event received a vegan or vegetarian version, and there were also small baskets of bread set around the table. We love small baskets of bread! <laughs> uh, you, bo uh, you ate both the salad and the bread, you just ate the salad. You ate some of the bread, you didn't eat any of it. Ah, uh, salad bread! We love a bread basket. <laughs> we love a bread basket. Go wolf down his salad before munching into a breadstick, quickly devouring that as well. We love a bread basket. <laughs> Hope the next part comes out soon and is bigger. There, fancy events usually have smaller plate sizes and it's because of the amount of courses for the most part. Because if they were any bigger, you wouldn't be able to it through most most people wouldn't be able to finish like all of it <laughs> so that like for, i love how carefully folded these napkins look <laughs> i just noticed that it looks so nice i also like these centerpieces i don't know looks pretty <laughs> uh you could hear him mumbling to himself as he reached over for another piece of bread we love a bread basket again he glanced around the table and you followed his line of sight with curiosity, noting that everyone else was still eating the salad. Stopping his hand midair, he quickly pulled back and rested it on his lap without taking another breadstick after all. It was clear that he was starting to feel unsure of himself and he looked a little out uh, and he looked a little out of place here. Words, sentences, ah. Uh. He folded his arms and turned away from them to you. Hey, did you like the salad? Uh, it was really good, it was too small, it was alright, it was pretty bad, you simply uh, shrugged. It was really good. I would like to imagine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, Coke could. Exa yeah, exactly. That's why I said a lot of people couldn't. I know that there, there are clear people that can. <laughs> if you go to a restaurant and there's no bread basket with olive oil, some kind of cream and big sea salt, you're in the wrong restaurant. True. If you're going to a restaurant and there's no bread basket at the middle of the table, get out of there. Bread basket, go to. Especially if you're going to like a fancy-ish restaurant, they might as well give you some bread. You're paying good money to be there. Might as well be a bread basket. <laughs> you're paying the money to be in the fancy restaurant. I hope there's a bread basket. I like a good bread basket. And if it has different kind of bread, like you have like different types of bread, some like breadsticks, all that kind of stuff that kind of that different types of bread and basket like just one type of bread basket is fine but if it has different types of bread and you get to like try the different breads that's also nice i just like bread baskets <laughs> it's nice to just snack on bread i can't wait to see what else they serve his gaze remained purposely tunneled on you as if he was trying not to even think about what the rest of the table might be doing uh, you gave Cove a pie on the, uh, on the hand. You made silly faces at the other guests while they weren't looking. You picked up a breadstick and gave it to Cove. You discreetly flipped the other guests off. You sat there quietly, feeling uncomfortable with yourself. Uh, we're taking the breadstick. Because you wanted the breadstick. It's okay. Oh, thank you. Cove spoke gently as he took the bread from your hand, looking choked up about your re by your reassurance. He munched away on it happily, seeming, uh, seeming much more at ease. It wasn't much longer until the main course was arriving and the various chicken, steak, and veggie dishes were being served through, uh, throughout the room. An array of scents wafted through the room, making your mouth water. 
You had chosen the chicken, you had chosen the steak, you went with the vegan meal, you went with the vegetarian meal. I'm going with the chicken. <laughs> okay, listen, if I go out and put myself into the mystery of beating other people, I'll go somewhere where I get good food for my money. It's not happening often, so if it does, I might as well eat good. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> that seems fair enough. <laughs> a plate of perfectly roasted chicken and vegetables was set in front of you with a delicate pale, uh, with a, a delectable pale gravy. Gov had gone uh, for the steak, and once he started to dig in, he was completely absorbed by his meal. You're gonna check if you keep inhaling your food like that. You kicked him under the table teasingly. You put a hand on his thigh under the table. You flicked something at him when he was off guard. You focused on your own food. I'm focusing on my own food. Um, it was going to be a full evening, so you wanted to try eating something while you could. Uh, dinner eventually ended, and last of all was dessert. A lemon sorbet that had been partially dyed blue. Also, it looks like the beach. The mix of white with bold streaks of blue made the little scoop look like a ball of roaring ocean waves. Yeah. Uh, the per uh, the effect was really pretty, but the serving size was small. Perhaps it was the pay it was the price to pay for artistry. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> um... Uh, you turned to cope to find him potting a little at the size of it. Digging into the dessert, it took him only a few bites to polish it off. Again, the other people around the table had barely begun uh, eating. An unimpressed air settled over him as he sat back in his chair, sipping at his water unhappily. Uh, you should appreciate what you got. You laughed at his uh, moping. You're such a big baby. We could get more dessert later. You killed the throat. We, we, could, we, yeah, we could just go get, like, cake or something. You gave him an encouraging smile. He looked at you, uh, up at you sheepishly, embarrassed at having caught sulking over such a thing. He fumbled for a defense. I mean... It was just really good, that's all, and now it's gone. But I'm okay. With a slight grin, he shrugged to show that he was really fine. Uh, would you like a bite of mine? Do you want my dessert? Alright. Uh... You scooped up a spoonful of your sorbet and offered it to him, holding a hand beneath it to avoid any drips. Because sorbets are, like, just generally, like, stuff made out of ice just goes dripping all the way which makes sense it melts but still though it's just uh holding a hand beneath to avoid any drips uh his eyes widened as he had the dessert hungrily surprised by the offer uh recovering quickly he leaned forward over the table lifting out of the chair a little as he ate the treat from your spoon as he sat back comingly happy with his mouth full you couldn't help but smile at the sight Go swallowed at the Fox Ocean and let out a satisfied sigh. Even though it wasn't that much more, the simple fact that he had gotten uh, more hit the spot. Thanks. No problem. You're welcome. And uh, you thought back on the way he used to be so terrified of sampling food that was yours, and now he hardly batted an eye. Progress. <laughs> no, it's just called we're actually dating and comfortable with this now, because there's no turtle tatting. <laughs> Survey is so good. Survey is so good. I just generally like frozen like stuff. I like like sorbet slum and and the fact that this is a lemon sorbet too. I like me a lemon sorbet. Oh, it was always amazing that you were uh, struck uh, with how ah I lost the sight of that that sentence ah flew away from me flew away from me so far. It was always amazing uh, when you were struck with how he'd grown. There we go. And how he stayed the same. There we go. Another person from Orca got up on stage to make a speech as everyone was nearing the end of their meal. They spoke mostly about the individual projects that the organization was working on and their plans for the near future, as well as encouraging anyone who was interesting, uh, interested to consider volunteering. Kov went forward over the table with his chin balanced on a hand, listening attentively to the words. As they came to a conclusion and everyone gave them a round of applause, Cove caught your eye and smiled. You wonder what would happen now. And then the lights dim and it suddenly looks so much more pretty. And then the lights dimmed. A couple of spotlights came on, projecting a water-like uh, effect around the room, which you can softly see on the floor right there. The guests gushed over the ambience and you looked around with wide eyes at the ripples on the walls, which... <sighs> pretty... Budget. The DJ that had previously been playing some soft mood music, because ambience, uh, in the background announced that the floor was open for dancing, slowly turning the volume up so it drifted through the space. Uh, when you glanced at Cove, his eyebrows had shut up and he mumbled quietly. Huh. I didn't know there would be dancing. I guess it makes sense now that I think about it. 
He gave an awkward laugh as you both watched as people rose from their seats. It was clear now that many of the donors were couples. A small crowd had started to form on the dance floor and the DJ played a romantic song to get everyone started off because that's what encourages people. Uh, Cove let his gaze float over the small sea of guests who were moving onto the floor, his hands twisting in his lap as his lips pulled into a tight line. And then, uh, with a breath and a lift of his hand, he turned to you. Well. Holes. Want to dance with me? Of course I do. I was just about to ask you the same thing. I don't really want to dance. Um, of course I do. His face lit up. You could uh, tell even beneath the dim light. Accepting Cove's outstretched hand, you rose from your seats together and stepped out onto the floor. When you had found a spot for yourselves amongst the other guests, you turned and faced him, standing close. Gove gave you a small smile as you looked up at him. He seemed a little nervous. Um. I don't know how to dance. Not for real. He admitted with a slight squeeze of your hand and a sheepish look. You gave him a reassuring grin and nudged a little closer to him still. It's okay, I know. With a familiar face full of affection, he let uh, go of you and raised his arms to slide both of his hands behind your neck. You wrapped your arms around him in response. Together, you gently swayed to the music, moving your feet in time to the delicate beat. It was nice just being here like this in each other's arms. You didn't have to worry about whether you knew the right steps or not. There was always a way to make it work between the two of you. I love that this sentence so much. Go leaned his head in nearer to yours, his forehead so close to yours that they almost touched. His breath was warm as he let out a content, uh, contented sigh, tickling your skin. Awesome. You really did look, uh, look so good tonight. You're such a stunning person. You blushed at the compliment and turned your face away, embarrassed by the grin on your face spreading so wide. Because that is so sweet and that is so nice. Have you had a nice time? I hope you did. Yes, I have. I came here with you, so yeah. I was having a pretty bad time until right now. Well, I've had worse nights. You lend... <sighs> it's been a perfect evening his bright eyes stayed locked on yours studying you with unmistakable ad uh, adoration thank you for staying you're still here just like you promised you would be your heart felt light as you continued to sw uh, sway while sw uh, holding your most beloved person so glad to be able to share a moment like this with him awesome. his smile suddenly tilted unexpectedly you couldn't guess the thought that crossed over his face Hayes? Yes? His voice a gentle whisper, he let, uh, let you in on, on his small secret. You know I like to complain about things uh, and that other people can stress me out, but... It's nice. Coming here with you tonight didn't make me feel bad. Not even a little. Ah. Your lips parted at the words, old memories rushing back to the surface of your mind. Those of your very first formal party together. The summer soiree at the country club. I was waiting for it to get referenced. This is like the I was like, this is the perfect opportunity for it, this to come up. And it did. <laughs> in an instant, you were 13 years old again, sitting on a grassy hill in the dark golf course with your neighbor. It was an experience you could never forget, where it felt as though there was no one else in the world and where he made you feel like there was no one else in the world he wanted to be with more. Uh, that was the night Cove tried so hard to enjoy with you, but I'd been plagued by his anxieties despite it all, and now... <sighs> Wholesome. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Feeling emotional, that was all you could choke out, and you found yourself holding on to him tighter. Oh. <laughs> Cove's hand ca uh, caressed the back of your neck, making you feel truly treasured. Even though I still get like that sometimes, when there's other stuff in our lives that's too much for me to deal with. But being with you, that's not one of those things. You make it so easy to do. You make me happy, more than happy. When I'm with you, I feel safe. His voice wavered ever so slightly, his feelings getting the best of him. This is so wholesome. I... I melted back into my chair. I want I want more than anything to be able to do that for you. He broke on the last words, tears listening in the corner of his eyes. You already have. You wiped away his tears. You nodded quietly. I'll always be here for you. I promise. Yes, him. You already have. This is so cute. You whispered securely. He stopped move, uh, moving to the music, taking a moment to look at you with nothing else, uh, with nothing else taking focus. 
He tried to speak, though there was nothing he could manage the first time. He tried again, but still couldn't say much. Then, I'll keep doing it. He was overwhelmed. A lot has happened, huh? You nodded faintly. You weren't sure if he meant just today, this summer, or your entire time knowing each other. I guess I'll apply. So. But it didn't really matter. It was true either way. Thinking back on the years that you and Kova had been neighbors, it was difficult to even try to reflect on it all at once. I'm so glad. So am I. <laughs> he gave you a soft uh, look on, on, and you beamed, knowing that that could also mean many things, but from his tone, you were certain he didn't only mean here at this event. It was more than that. There's nowhere else I'd rather be, so am I. I think we have died on that. Slow. We're not ruining the moment with that. That's just breaking the tone. You're amazing. You can even speak. You chuckled happily at the view and the long adventure you'd been on. It's, oh, it's so cheesy, but come on. <laughs> Give me this. You loved him. Fully and completely, you did. His smile widened and he pressed his body against yours, resting his head into the crook of your neck, stroking the back of your head with his fingers. You tightened your grip on him and let your head fall against his shoulder. As the night drifted on, you held each other tight, swaying to the music as if you were the only ones in the room. Poe was sweet the entire time, his warmth br uh, brushing against your skin as he whispered words of affection in your ear. He was extremely good at making you feel special. You couldn't have hidden your blissful smile even if you wanted to. The party eventually started to wind down, and at last, it came to an end. When the main lights turned on, you blinked against the brightness of them, making sure you still had Cove in your sights. That must be dressing, just like, just suddenly, whoo, light. <laughs> One final speaker came up to the podium on the stage, thanking all the guests for coming and wishing everyone a good night. It was, a, it was bittersweet to see it come to a close. Your time with Cove here was precious. At least the memories would be brought with you. Giving the space one more look, you walked together with Kova to the parking lot. The other guests were doing the same as you got uh, stuck in a bit of a crowd. Though Kova was so tall, you could always see him, and it was easy enough not to get separated. <laughs> Once again, another episode of Benefits of Your Friend Being Tall, I guess. <laughs> the parking lot itself was quite big and even more noticeable now, with fewer cards blocking the view. It took a little while to actually locate Kova's car across his expanse. Eventually, you found it, and the two of you bundled inside of the vehicle and buckled up. The trip home was quiet as you both silently reflected back on the experience. The event had been the biggest night of the year for Orca, and now it was all over, just like that. Outside your window, the surroundings soon became familiar and you found yourself back in your neighborhood. Cove pulled the car into his driveway and put it in park before letting out a relief breath. Mm. Home sweet home. Yeah. After climbing out of the car, you walked slowly down to uh, down to the road, Cove coming over to stand beside you. You stopped in the middle of the street, right between your house and his, and turned to him, finding him in the process of opening his mouth to speak. Strangely, he clamped his lips together as though he had suddenly thought better of it. Uh, you, stayed, uh, you stayed silent. That was quite a night. Good night, Cove. Thank you for eating me tonight. That's kind of awkward. That was quite a night. Let's just start there. <laughs> Go let out a breathy laugh, nodding in agreement. Yeah, it was. Uh, you kissed him night, you stepped in for a hug, you ruffled his hair playfully, you gave him a friendly nod, you patted him on the arm, you waved goodbye. Kiss. <laughs> Need to be close again before the night ended, you pressed your lips against his in a gentle kiss. He smiled as you separated, running his fingers over the side of your face. Night. With a last wispy smile, he left towards his front door. Figuring you shouldn't, figuring you shouldn't linger in the street for much longer, you crossed the, remaining, uh, the remainder of the road and did the same. When you reached your house, you pulled out your keys and stuck them in the door, trying your best to be silent about it. Opening the door a crack, you turned back and looked at Ko from over your shoulder. Your eyeballs looked in, in surprise to see he was doing the same, holding his front door open but waiting for you to go inside before he did. You shared an amused smile before you both stepped into your own houses, locking the door behind you. That's so sweet! <laughs> it was quite late, so everyone else was already asleep. As quiet as a mouse, you tiptoed up to your bedroom and changed out of your formal clothes into your pajamas. Uh, now that you were finally home, you were exhausted. You brushed your teeth and got ready for bed in darkness before crawling under the covers and letting out a heavy breath. 
It was still strange to think about how that was it. The build up, uh, the build up to the event had felt like so much, and I was completely behind you. It always feels like that when you're looking like forward to something, or you're like working so hard towards something, and then it just like happens, and then it's over, it's done, and suddenly it's like, huh? It like puts it in perspective. I don't know. It just feels weird right afterwards. It's like this was like the biggest thing until now and now it there there it goes it's so weird <laughs> your mind was busy with rapid yet muddled uh muddled thoughts as you faded closer and closer to sleep an unconsciousness uh creeped up on you you felt more content it was a big deal but there would be more in the future you could accept what it had been and you could dream about what you'd get to experience next and then you were awakened from dreams right back into reality by a sound. Your eyebrows pinched together, fully unprepared to be a part of the waking world again. The day was over and it had been an eventful one. But you heard another noise. It was a tapping. Your eyes flew open. Uh, your eyes flew open. The window. There was a tapping that came from your window. Cove Holden. <laughs> you slowly forced yourself to get up. You went over to let the guy in. You rushed over. To <laughs> you rushed over. You tumbled out of bed, taking your blankets with you. Phew! You left it on the floor when you scam uh, when you scampered over to the window. You saw through the glass that Cove's eyebrows were raised, and you suddenly realized that in your rush you hadn't taken care to be quiet. Whoops! Uh, he had probably heard you crash to the floor. Uh, but that wasn't the matter at hand. You flung open your window and faced him completely, with nothing separating the two of you any longer. You had not been surprised to find Cove awkwardly crouched on your window ledge. However, you were taken aback to see that he was a little overdressed. Ko hadn't changed out of his formal clothes. You also noticed that he was perched clumsily. You didn't know if it was because he was trying to keep his fancy clothes clean or if he felt weird about something. His body was too stiff and awkward. Even given that Ko was normally all thumbs, he looked off balance significantly more than usual. Ko smiled sheepishly. Hi Ace. Uh, hi, Kovoyer here. How come you're just like that? It's nice to see you, Romeo. Have you checked? Have you looked at a, a at a clock? It's too late for this. You remain silent. It's nice to see you, Romeo. You moved aside to let him inside. He cautiously stepped down by stretching his uh stepped down by stretching his legs over. Strangely, he didn't use his hands for support. It was clear to you now he was holding something. When he was safely on his feet, he briefly checked out his clothes, twisting around to see the back of his pants. He caught you looking and shrugged. I mean. I did go home after the event, but I knew I wasn't going to be able to settle down, so I just walked back out. I needed fresh air and time away from everything. Cove paused for a moment and raised his clap, uh, his claps together hands where you could see them. But then something happened and well, so I have something I want to show you. Go grin like a child and gently unfurl his fingers, not being able to keep you in suspense for even a minute. The firefly! <laughs> It's so sweet. <laughs> Carefully sitting inside was a yellow, a tiny yellow light. It blinked off and then on again. A firefly. Delicately, he moved his hand closer, uh, closer so you could see the creature better. They're back. It's so sweet. Ah, <laughs> my heart. It's so wholesome. <laughs> Can't do this. He closed his eyes, his smile now faintly, uh, faintly illuminated by his insect companion. <laughs> Remember the, the first time I caught one? I always will. I could barely manage anything because of that neon pink cast I was stuck with all summer. You were still stunned by what was happening, but couldn't help snickering when Cove did. It was thanks to you that I finally held a firefly in my own hand. I'm glad I could help you. Hmm. When that happened, I... Well... It was just really memorable for me. Honestly, I didn't think I'd see them this year. I don't know why. It's just they were kind of late and I guess I've been worrying about a lot of stuff lately. You could tell that the firefly genuinely lifted his spirits. He seemed at peace and he wanted to share that with you. The fact that uh, his first thought after discovering the fireflies was to come over and celebrate the joy with you made you suddenly feel very cherished. Go open his eyes, but he looked away, not meeting yours. It's nice. It's really nice, I think. Even if the fireflies disappear for a while, it doesn't mean they're really gone. They'll come back. I can see them again. 
You smile. Technically, fireflies aren't even gone. They're, they're just eggs and larvae. True. Um, smiled. And then you looked at the firefly, uh, the firefly keenly. There was definitely something poetic about them. You felt the warmth in your heart. Gov looked at your face, his smile now fragile. It makes me think about the two of us. We're together, then we say goodbye, and then we're together again. Day after day, year after year, and... Even if our time apart gets longer, that doesn't make it forever. It's so sweet. Ace. <laughs> Always be there whenever you want to see me. You're so in love with him. There was nothing else you could think then, and he needed to know. You were so happy with, uh, to be with him, and he needed to know that. You quietly said his name. Can we throw in the I love you now? Because, wow! Your heart started to pound in your ears, and all you could hear was blood rushing. You looked at Kov and found yourself fixated. The only thing you were aware of was your rapid pulse in him. It was as if your entire relationship was playing over in your mind, every step that led you here. Everything from that very first night you met him as, as just a little kid from the way he'd always held a special place in your heart. To the first time you saw the fireflies together, to the first time you snuck in your room, and then to every other moment you shared. All of it came back to you. Gov's expression had turned curious as you left him waiting, wordless. He tilted his head in a question, his lips parted to speak, but you went first. We're doing it. We're doing it. There's no backing out now. <sighs> Let's keep it short and sweet. <laughs> With your confession, the world stopped for a second. Co froze. Then, as if your words had turned a, uh, turned a faucet, tears began falling down Cove's cheeks. He silently mouthed something, but you couldn't make out a word. Cove, you stepped closer and closer, moving the distance between the two of you. He covered his mouth with a hand. He must have forgotten about the firefly resting there, and it flew into the uh, the night with a twinkle. He used his other hand to shakingly reach, uh, reach over and interlace his fingers with yours. He gripped you tightly as he started sobbing harder. You cried with him, you wiped away his tears, you squeezed his hand back, you smiled at him, you chuckled affectionately. This. Gently, you shook your free hand and wiped his tears away. Um. <sighs> God, yeah. What do you even. Uh, words refused to come. There was nothing. There was something at your throat, an overwhelming amount of emotion. Ukko removed a hand from his mouth and used it to hold the back of your head. He brought your face to him, bending his neck down to be closer to your level, and your foreheads and your foreheads brush together. Every time they do the forehead brush thing, it's so sweet. I find it so nice. His voice trembled, it crackled, and then and it shook. This was raw, straight from Grove's ah, uh, from Grove's heart. And we got the "I love you" back. <laughs> He closed his eyes tightly and repeated himself, but now he could say it firmly. I love you. His aqua eyes sparkled when he opened them again. Fresh tears poured out with an outburst of emotion. Sorry. I'm sorry I can't get it together. It's just, I tried so much to love you quietly, secret, secretly, and that being it. But I, I really wanted you to feel the same. I wanted you to love me back. I wanted to hear you say it. I just kept thinking, what if you didn't? Maybe what I felt was too much, and... I didn't know how to handle that. I didn't know what to do, but I didn't want to put any of that on you either. You aren't doing something bad. Everything you do is right and wonderful. I'm always like this. It wasn't your fault, and I... I it wasn't your fault I had to be like that. I'm just... like that. He leaned in closer, hiding his face from view, his lips trailing over, uh, over to your ear. He whispered. But... You love me, but you love me. You love me. He moved his head back so his forehead was centered on yours, and then he closed his eyes. He shook. The hand you still held was trembling. I'm so sorry. I'm really always like this. You guessed him, you held him, you gave him a moment. Go straight for it. I can't. You pulled him into you, kissing his lips. He returned it desperately. Cove managed to bring a fragile smile onto his face. He was still shaking, but there was something, uh, something decided about him now. I love you. <laughs> Soft. I can't do this. 
He repeated it more as if to make up for all the times he didn't let himself say it before. As he spoke, his tears dried, uh, dried up and his breathing became more even. The reformation uh, helped him calm down. Thank you for telling me. Cosmo was bolder I, uh, even as his voice wavered and he ducked his head with a childish uh, shyness. He clearly fought against getting emotional again. His watery eyes, his amused hair, the tears still drying on his cheeks. You loved him so much. I need to tell you, uh, you always been lucky having you. I'm so, so happy to have done it. You're welcome. It was only the truth. I love you. Um, go about the sides of your face, but moved his thumb down to softly brush your lips. It was exciting. He wanted to keep touching you, and you wanted that too. You're back at the perfect time. <laughs> you are back at the perfect time. I could lie and say I forgot about this, but nah. Nah. This, this game. You said I hushed over, under your breath and then brought your lips to his ear and repeated yourself longingly. Oh my god. <laughs> this is the moment where I get really, really bashful. <laughs> A shiver went, uh, went through him and his grip on you tightened. He had to, uh, he had to with the way his knees, uh, with his knees almost buckled. <sighs> How I <laughs> truly am. You are back at the best moment. <laughs> um. <laughs> How are we doing this? Um. We're starting here. <laughs> you move your face over to uh, you move your face over to his cheek and give it a nice smooch. You smiled and then planted another on the tip of his nose. You kissed across his forehead, moved on to br to gently brush your lips against his eyelids and then the corners of his mouth. He had he made a small uh, he made small ple uh, please noises and wrapped his arms around your lower back. He pressed himself even closer against you. Now we're going here. <laughs> He nuzzled up against him, you could hear his breathing picking up. You kissed across the exposed part of his neck. He made a quick gasp and let it out as a long sigh. While you busied yourself over his neck, he reached down to stroke your thigh slowly. Which, wow. Um... <laughs> Again, not much content I can make. This is the moment where I get really, really bashful. You ran a hand through his hair. You stayed close to him and used one uh, hand to comb through his hair. He leaned into your hand when your fingers got uh, deeper into his strands. Gov tilted his head and brought uh, his mouth to yours. Your uh, lips delicately touched. Too brief and slight to be a true kiss, but enough to be exciting. The slight touches were because he was also using his mouth to mumble something, although you couldn't make out any clear words. Ah, uh, good enough time to do this. <laughs> you had to pull Coven to a kiss, and he welcomed it. Both of his hands cr uh, cradled your head gently. He was full of sweetness for you, and eagerly you took it. You only separated when you needed air. You huffed, getting oxygen back into your lungs, all, wh all the while grinning at your boyfriend. Cove beamed at you and then kissed you back once more, a brief but solid stamp of his affection. This is so... Mm -hmm. Then you stepped forward with purpose and pressed your hands against his shoulders. You kept walking. Whoops, 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 stop, stop. Oh, there we go. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> whoops, we gotta speed run this again. <laughs> uh, I accidentally clicked one of them, but that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> We'll get there. You bow one head to the nape of his neck while you ran the other along his chest. His uh, shirt wrinkled, but neither of you cared. His body was firm to the touch. He kissed your ear long enough to heat it up and down your jawline, letting the warmth spread while you touched him. Now we're doing this. <laughs> then you stepped forward with purpose and pressed your hands against his shoulders. You kept walking. His eyes widened, but he let you lead him, st uh, stepping back uh, at the prompting. A cove squeaked when he made contact with the wall. You st uh, you stirred up and you stirred up into his flushed face. Cove's body was tense being in such a position, but you knew with complete certainty that it wasn't in a bad way. You could feel one of his knees rubbing against the inside of your leg encouragingly. Ah, uh, we're gonna do the ones we already did. 
because I accidentally scrolled backwards and I did not mean to. Whoops. Uh, you began to cove into a kiss and he welcomed it. Both of his hands cradled you uh, gently. He was so full of sweetness for you and eagerly you took it. You only separated when you needed air. You huffed, getting oxygen back into your lungs, all the while grinning at your boyfriend. Cove beamed at you and then kissed uh, kissed you back once more, a brief but solid stamp of his affection. Then Cove carefully rested his, uh, his hands on your shoulders and looked away. He took a few deep breaths and, as he kept you there. You could tell he was all worked up as he, as he could manage for tonight. That was alright. You're feeling rather satisfied too. He smiled a little and tried to slow your own racing heart. You couldn't help thinking about... How happy you were uh, to be with him, how you were certain you wanted to spend your life with him, how you were certain you wanted to spend your life with him, and you told him as much. Um. <laughs> it's a little. <laughs> I just wanna. Yes, alright, we already went past this. Let's go. Have we. <sighs> God. This is, we're, we're all, oh, it's so, ah, uh, all of this is so, ah, uh, yes, yeah, send the hearts, <laughs> send the hearts, send all the hearts, oh, we get to spend our whole lives together, Cove's expression crumbled again, he wasn't able to tamp down the newest wave of emotion, his eyes watered once more and he took a few heavy breaths, I, I hope so too, we could be together always, have a place of our own, and getting kids, also pets. <laughs> pets is so important. Kids, kids can be an over uh, later. Pets is a must. <laughs> you think so? You laugh brightly. Of course. Pets too. You think I'd leave Sunbeam with dad? You felt warm being able to talk about this openly. You like to imagine the life you could have together, and now you could do it with him. He rubbed at his, at his guard arm bashfully. You know, I thought having to grow up for real was going to be so hard. I didn't know if I even could, but you... Well, maybe it won't be that impossible. So... I mean, I better make sure make sure it's not, huh? I'm looking forward to it. Finally, he was able to laugh softly. The tears were nothing but salty remnants on his cheeks. He brightened up as if, as if, finally, as if finally able to process the absolute joy of tonight on full. You felt good too, and took a little more time together to simply exist in the new dynamic you had stepped into. Go looked into your eyes with a soft, slightly shy expression. There was a hope in his smile. Do you want to go to the hill with me? I bet there's still fireflies. Yes! Go <laughs> Brian, uh, he was practically bouncing at the thought of a secret excursion before, the, uh, before he suddenly became bashful. So... How should we leave? We could just try the door. We don't have to do the window thing, but maybe that'd bother your family? We're doing the window thing. And you both chuckled at how awkward it would be if your moms, or worse, Liz, saw, we, uh, saw you going on a midnight firefly catching trip. You'd be sure to avoid that. Um, you could live from- if we could leave from the window. <laughs> Let's go through the window. Go of not an understanding. You grab some shoes and readied yourself for an adventure. You were glad that there was no way you'd run into another soul outside. Go uh, would be way overdressed and you were still in your jammies. <laughs> we're the opposite specters of the of the dress up at like a specter. <laughs> you let uh, Cove go first. He stepped back onto the ledge as you carefully followed. He shuffled along and soon you reached the garage. You planned uh, to use the fence from there to reach the ground. Coach shakily climbed down to the fence and held it tightly with a death uh, with a death grip. He hesitated for a moment and then let himself fall to the ground. He leaned against the, f the fence and projected hush words up to where you were waiting. Are you okay? Do you want help? Uh, you nodded yes, you shook your head no. Um, I think I could probably do this. You reached the ground with ease. It wasn't difficult, especially with the fence there to help you. Uh, Cove gave you an encouraging smile, but neither of you risked uh, speaking yet. You briskly snuck behind the house and uh, and up to the old white poppy hill. And Cove was right. The entire hill was lit up, insects twinkling here and there with their pale yellow light. The fireflies! <laughs> Go let out a content sigh, finally able to relax in full. He strode further up the hill to better enjoy the view. You walked along as well, letting yourself be surrounded by surrounded by the twinkling display. So cute. Then, without warning, Cope plopped uh, onto his back. He paid no mind to uh, smacking his formal attire in the grass. 
He put an arm under his head and stretched the rest of, of his limbs out. He was clearly getting quite comfortable in the dirt there. He kept standing, you sat down, you laid down on the grass. We're laying down. You sat down first and then fell back. You could see the stars when you looked up at the night sky. Yes. <laughs> Why would I ever say no to the snuggles? He was warm in contrast to the chilly ground. Cove cuddled closer and turned, tucking his arm near, uh, near his shoulders. Hmm. I wonder if Dad will be mad about the grass stains. He tugged at the color of his shirt. He didn't sound concerned, just idly curious. I don't know. I hope not. He's, uh, his smile bent a little and it, and it went silent between you. The only sounds were the rustling of bogs, uh, bugs and the breeze, and the faraway crashes of waves on the sea. You couldn't help but reflect on what happened only a brief time earlier. Between this and your room, this almost felt like a different world. Was it even real? What happened between you two? Uh, you could almost be convinced it wasn't and that you had never actually stopped dreaming. You stole a glance at Cove. He caught you and uh, he caught you and blushed. That uh, that little reddening reassured you. Cove remembered, uh, same as you, what you had what you had was real. You continued watching the fireflies. You wanted to catch some fireflies. You asked Cove if you wanted to catch fireflies. You challenged him to a rolling race down the hill. You asked Cove to dance with you. Um, let's catch some fireflies. Do you think we could catch fireflies together? Cause. Just, we might as well. Go <laughs> turn his head towards you with a bent grin. I think that sounds like a plan. We smiled at each other and Cove rolled his fancy sleeves up. Then he clambered up to his feet, full of bug catching enthusiasm. You got up and brushed off your clothes. A pesky blade of grass tried to stay stuck, uh, stuck to your back. With simultaneous nods of your heads, you both ran around the hill trying to take a hold of the flying creatures. Every so often, one of you succeeded. Like the children you once were, you would race over to the other to show off your catch. What had actually changed? The fireflies were as bright as ever, and you laughed together the entire time. The hour grew late, and the fireflies mostly dispersed, until only a few uh, stragglers remained. Then, then even they blinked out of sight, leaving you alone with Cove and your thoughts. Cove stole a second to realize the words that had been filling his head during the quiet. I just smile every time. <laughs> Aww. You felt a great deal of happiness. Cove's expression was completely open, honest, and full of sincerity. He meant every word. He truly loved you. No matter how much it didn't seem real yet, it was. It felt as though this was a night that would never end, but you knew it would have to, all too soon. You were only grateful to have been a part of it. These were moments to truly treasure. You'd never let yourself forget them. I love that one. <laughs> I love it so much. I remembered how much I loved it just now. My heart. Uh, uh, <laughs> you go to the dentist from the, to the cavities I'm getting from all the sweetness. It's so sweet. It's new time though. It's new time. Taking a sip of water and we're going because it is new time. New stuff. I'm excited about happiness. I'm curious. Honestly, let me do drive. Hopefully. We'll see how long it takes to cover happiness. But I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm just generally excited all the time. And now I'm just... <sighs> now I'm also just... Aw. The day and the week were... Uh, Ace, you're not ready for happiness. Oh. <laughs> the day and the week were nearing their end, and you were welcoming it in your own way by laying spra uh, sprawled out on your bed. It was quiet in your house, getting to that time of the night where you really should be sleeping, but you didn't feel tired at all. You rolled onto your side. Outside, the last lit-up window across the street blinked out, uh, leaving the buildings on the block faceless, uh, on the block faceless silhouettes against a uh, blue-black sky dotted by stars. Your phone came to life on the nightstand, a pale light cast on the ceiling of your room. Without looking, you threw your arms, uh, your arm out behind yourself, uh, groping around on the table, uh, on the tabletop until your phone was under your palm. At that point, you lifted it to your face, snorting once you saw the familiar name attached to a short message just reading, Hey. 
Goop wasn't much for sleeping now either. As you made uh, as you made to reply though, more and more texts came through in quick succession. Hey. You like doing things. You like doing things with me. I mean, what I'm saying is that there are, uh, there are things you and I do and we like together at the same time. Now that was eyebrow raising. You propped yourself up on one elbow, sitting up upright against the headboard so you could text more comfortably. Yeah? Well, you you uh, you've got it all figured out. Dang, you suck at texting. Man, am I excited to see where this is going. You're right about that. You waited for him to continue. Yeah? Without much to go off on, you sent something short to show him you were listening. It's like, I am reading. I just don't know what to say. You're free for a while, right? I should be free the next few days. Cool, I thought so. I was just making sure. All right. You could almost hear Cove's intake of breath as he prepared for the next uh, for the next part, despite the conversation being text alone. The window of your messaging app might as well have been a screenshot. You were left to keep track of the of the passing seconds with the rising and falling cries of crickets outside. I'm what? When your screen darkened from an activity, you wondered if you mine wouldn't because I have it unless it's on like power safe mode. Uh, but I just have it so it doesn't turn off because I hate when that happens. Uh, when your screen darkened from an activity, you wondered if you should do something yourself. Uh, yes, you thought you could give him a nudge. No, you thought he'd get around to it when he was ready. Uh, I guess so. You dropped your phone against your chest to close your eyes. You wouldn't be able to see him, but it would be hard to miss the telltale sign of an incoming message. Even if it took a while, you were willing to wait. I mean, we're not doing much else anyway, are we? And soon enough, a reply came. Uh, what if we did something new or is sort of unexpected? Would you be okay with that? Something we haven't ever done together? You lowered your phone, leaning back against the headboard as you thought it over. The streets outside your window looked different at night, but you knew that if you were to wander out, there would be no chance of you losing your way. There wasn't a single inch of your neighborhood that you didn't know by heart. And everywhere you looked, from the grassy hill behind your house to the shops by the beach, you could recall a time you'd been there with Cove, mostly just chatting as you walked together. You didn't mind everyday things like that, but as for something new or unexpected... I'd love that. What do you have in, my, uh, in mind exactly? What's gone into Cove Holden to want to do something brand new? You had no response to that. I... Um... Uh, I... Yeah, sure. That'd be fun. Cool. Heart. <laughs> Thank you. One by one, Cope began presenting his ideas, starting off with attending a play. We've watched TV together and movies, but real uh, people performing in, uh, but real people performing in front of us. We've never done that. I'm not sure what plays exactly are on right now, but that adds to the unexpected factor. Uh, there was a slight pause before Cove moved on to the next plan, visiting an aquarium. That makes sense, right? We could, um, uh, uh, we could go to the beach and stuff. We're pretty close to the water. We go to the beach and stuff. We're pretty close to the water. But going to, a uh, to the aquarium would be water in a whole new way. And the third and last idea was the one that was most out of the blue. Ice skating. Ice skating? <laughs> it was a total wild card, as Ko was putting it, and the polar opposite of what you two normally did. Is the logic behind this, we live by the beach, so we could polar opposite and do something related to the cold, and go ice skate? Is this the thought process here? Because in that case, I, I- sure, I could totally- I could see that. However, it was fitting right in with the other options of something you had never done together. Let's say, if hypothetically, someone wanted to surprise you with an unexpected outing, would that be okay? Hypothetically, not at all something that could generally happen. Hypothetically. You could not but smile fondly at that, wondering to yourself who that someone could be. Hmm. Uh, you said it would be perfect if that somehow happened. You joked that it wasn't much of a surprise. You said doing anything with him was good. That would be, hypothetically speaking, that would be great. <laughs> if only a hypothetical someone existed. <laughs> hypothetically speaking, that sounds, that sounds good. Great, not that it means anything, but which one would be your favorite? It'd be... 
Seeing a play, the aquarium, or ice skating. I'm between the aquarium and ice skating. Seeing a play is the one least at my, like, at, like the bottom of my list. <laughs> Seeing a play is at the bottom of the list. It is between the aquarium and ice skating. Absolutely. <laughs> and now I'm being really indecisive because I don't know which I'd rather more. This feels like a difficult decision for me. I don't know what to pick. <laughs> I'm saving because at some point in my life I might want to come back and pick others. Is you still not ready? Am I not? Also, hi Jack. Um, am I? I don't know. Um. Um. I might ask Siri to flip a coin. We're doing heads. Heads is ice skating. Tails aquarium. Hey Siri, flip a coin. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's not that hard. It is for me. The idea was so out there that you couldn't not pick it, and it was a chance to see Cove out of his element too, plus ice skating. Alright, cool. Uh, don't think too hard about this talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. Okay. You're making me laugh with this, I sure hope it means something. Uh-huh, sure, I promise not to try figuring it out. You're freaking adorable. Uh, just, yeah, just out there. <laughs> don't say that. Good night, Ace. It's really late now. Yeah, it is. Good night. <laughs> Sick! And with that final send-off, you put your phone to sleep and lowered it with a sigh. You had no idea when Ko was going to invite you to the ice rink, but your mind was buzzing with all the possibilities of the coming days uh, the coming days might bring. If only you knew how easy it was. <laughs> You're just confusing me further! <laughs> Your phone went back to its uh, place on the nightstand and you resumed snuggling into the mattress. My favorite thing ever. <laughs> One hand thrown to the side and the other is shoved underneath your pillow. Actually, I'd be hugging a pillow so tightly that I might as well just... I don't know. Somewhere between this day and the next, you finally find yourself asleep. And morning eventually came. And how bright my room suddenly got. <laughs> it felt like my eyes were actually readjusting. <laughs> wow. The next morning, after washing up for breakfast, you had just climbed uh, uh, climbed the stairs to your room, ready to tackle the day, when you heard the ringing of the doorbell. You turned towards the sound, angling your head in confusion. Was someone expecting a visitor today? Then again, you weren't sure if anyone else was around, judging by the lack of footsteps you were hearing. So, <laughs> fair enough. I'm not aware of what happens in my own house very much. You raced back downstairs to answer the door as you pulled it open and saw who it was. You were only further confused. <laughs> Cove? He was standing there with an unsure look on his face at first. Like, he didn't know wh who would answer the door, but the moment he saw it was you, a shy grin uh, spread across his face. He raised one hand and gave you a little wave. Um. Surprise. Hey, this is a surprise. Don't you normally use the window? What might you be here for in this fine day? You simply... <laughs> you found it funny how you had grown so used to, uh, uh, to hearing him tapping the glass pane. At this point, it's just any no noise on the window. Um, you hear him tapping the glass pane that showing up at your front door was what it took to get a reaction. Go turn his head to the side with a considering lift of his eyebrows. I guess I do, but not today. I... I got you something. He slid his hand out from behind his back, holding it up in front of your face as he's offered the present to you. Your eyes widened once you saw what it was. A new writing journal. You hadn't expected a gift at all, let alone something as soft as this. Oh! <laughs> Taking one look at your face, no doubt a complicated mix of happiness and, and shock, Cove let out a, a laugh. So sweet! Surprise again. It really is. Suddenly, Cove raised his, uh, his head, his eyes uh, finding yours and startling you into stillness. Cove's question came softly, his voice lingering on some words as his shyness got the better of him. Ace. Would you... 
go on a date with me today? I was thinking maybe we could go ice skating. He inclined his head at you with a crooked smile. I had a feeling that might, uh, that might be a nice place to invite you to. <laughs> yes, I'd love to. You laughed at the ridiculousness of the surprise, managed to say yes. You're my boyfriend, of course you can ask me on a date. You nodded eagerly. I'd love to. Go off a uh, sigh of relief, uh, his uh, lips spreading in a wide, cheery smile. All right, we're gonna do it. <laughs> with this big uh, question uh, asked and accepted, Gov raised the gift towards you again, gesturing with his other hand for you to receive it officially. You carefully took it from him. I wanna put this somewhere safe, then we can go. Is that okay? Gov had no problem with that. Still grinning, he stepped back, his body angling uh, away as he waved a hand in the air. I'll get my car ready then, meet me there. Okay. As soon as the door clicked shut, you dashed upstairs to your room, prepping a sp uh, spot first for Cove's gift. Then, satisfied with your efforts, you grabbed your bag, tossing whatever you thought you needed for uh, you need for the outing before heading back outside. Don't worry, Ace. You'll figure out what I'm talking about at some point. That, or you can just uh, just get the gift of prophecy real quick. As as curious as I am, I think I'd rather just see what happens. I'd rather be shocked in my own time. As appealing as as, as the gift of prophecy sounds right now. <laughs> uh, before heading back outside, Go's old car was parked right in front of you, uh, of the house. You went straight in, uh, straight to it, hopping in the shotgun seat. As you buckled yourself in, Cove leaned forward to watch you with an uh, eager expression. His fingers tapping the dashboard to uh, to a lively sort of rhythm. He was ready to start, but trying to tone it down so you wouldn't feel rushed. I'm glad we're doing this together. Me too. Did the music stop? No. We're good. It just- this one starts soft. Okay. I was very concerned. Um, once your seatbelt was secured, Co checked his mirrors to make sure the street was clear before pulling away from the curve. And like that, the two of you began your trip. Now that you were uh, sitting down for the drive, it felt like a good moment to re uh, to regain your bearings. You shut your pack uh, onto your lap and began uh, thumbing through your things to make sh uh, sure that in your hurry to leave, you hadn't forgotten anything important. Uh, you were dressed more warmly to hopefully be prepared for the trip. You were dressed normally, but packed some extra layers just in case. You were dressed uh, normally and didn't bring any extra layers. Uh, I could bring like a sweater maybe, but that's about it. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, with the jacket stuffed in there, your bag had taken on a loop-sided sort of bulk, awkward to carry around. Yep, <laughs> when your bags mold to like the amount of stuff you have in them. Yeah. <laughs> you zipped it close again and Cove began to speak, raising his voice to be heard over the ambient noise of the car ride. So... S ice skating, this is gonna be crazy. Having fun with water that's frozen. Unheard of. He chuckled at his own joke and you shook your head at him, though you couldn't help grinning at his silly comment. As you looked at him, you caught a glimpse of, uh, of the back seat. It was empty, which wouldn't be strange any other day. You didn't bring a jacket? Nope. You know I hate extra layers, and there aren't any uh, parents around to force me to do it now. Fair enough. Yeah, your parents can tell you what to do. You're a big boy. It's cold at him for not preparing for what you were doing. You're probably gonna regret that once we're there. I like that you don't wear a lot of layers, too. You simply shook your head. It's <laughs> just gonna go for the first one. <laughs> go give you a brief glance, smiling. Thanks for understanding. You laid your arm uh, against the window, the scenery outside passing by in a blur until finally you arrived at the ice skating rink. The two of you grabbed your things and got out of the car. A wave of heat so thick it felt like you were swimming in it. Uh, and it hit you as soon as you set foot onto the sun-hot asphalt of the parking lot. Go fell and stepped next to you, dragging the back of his arm uh, across his face. You and Go exchanged looks. Well, here we are, his tilted smile seemed to say. Uh, the skating rink was a large building of glass and concrete, with its name plastered in simple white letters above its entrance. The nondescript flat rooftop-style architecture reminded you a bit of, a lo of the local mall. Ice skating! So, woo. You went in. As the door slid shut behind you, you heard Cove's sharp intake of breath. You glanced over at him, seeing the stunned look on his face, his lips drawn tight in a frown. Uh. It's really cold in here. You're equally amazed at how cold it was. Are you gonna be okay? While well, you don't, of course, it's cold. I guess you'll have to change your name from Cove to cold. You made no comment. You, 
sure. <laughs> Between the parking lot and this, you imagine uh, this was what stepping out of a sauna and falling into a pile of snow felt like. I thought it would be cold, but I didn't know it would be this cold. Goat bumped his head up and down in agreement, wrapping his arms around himself. How about you? How are you feeling? I'm feeling it's fine. It's not too bad. Wish I'd brought even more layers. Um... I would like to imagine. There were no denying that the building was chilly, but once you relaxed, it was bearable. He laughed breathily. That's good. Your neighbor suddenly uh, shuddered dramatically, almost retracting his head into his shirt in his renewed effort to keep warm. Uh, you called on to him to keep uh, uh, warm. You sure, you sure tough luck for him. Damn. <laughs> you took a step towards him and wrapped him up uh, in what you hoped would eventually become a warm embrace. <laughs> For a second, his body went even more rigid, but he quickly relaxed and gave you a self-conscious smile. Thank you. No problem. I'm happy to. His shy chuckle shook through his, uh, through his abdomen. You felt it on the side of your body right before he put his arm around your waist and pressed you closer, an unspoken sign that he had no problem with that. Like this, the two of you ambled over to the rental counter together, a slight awkward process that had you uh, unsure if you were going forward or sideways. Uh, the clerk ended up uh, giving you two funny lo looks over the top of her glasses as though uh, as you went through the process of paying for admission and finding skates in your shoe sizes. But through it all, Cove didn't shiver once. Eventually, you had your skates. It was, pro it was, particularly, it was a particularly well-worn set. So sturdy, but where it had once been blue, it was now faded, and where it, went, and where it had once been white, it was now closer to tan. <laughs> Fair enough. With some time and a low bench, you were, uh, you both were set up with the rented shoes and now stood by the opening to the rink. Yay! It was an oblong shape surrounded by pan, uh, with panel wall with rails. You were a little amused to see that, uh, there were others dressed in t-shirts and shorts and you turned to Cove to point it out. The answering laugh that came, uh, sounded a little distracted. Well, here we go. Tentatively, he took one step out into the ice. The series of movements that followed were reminiscent of a jack in, a, in the box swing and in the, in the box uh, jack in the box swinging back and forth uh, on its spring. You thought you might laugh, but it died in, the, in your throat when, for one hard lurching second, Cove's upper body tipped forward at a 90 degree angle. Yes, this is what ice skating for the first time, yeah, would be feeling like. And then you hold on to the wall and ice skate awkwardly for a bit, and then you gain a little bit of confidence, and then you let go of the wall, and then it's fine for a bit, and if you're me, you fall down at least once. Every time you've been ice skating. <laughs> I've only, Every time I've been ice skating, I've only fallen once each time. <laughs> and it's usually because I was doing stupid shit. So, um... His hand shot out, uh, slapping against the ledge running uh, along the plexiglass panels on the side of the, of the rink. A relief sigh left both him and you. He was mumbling to himself as he craned his head back. He must have caught the alarm on your face because he gave you a smile as shaky as his footing. I'll make it work. Uh, you'd never ice skated before now either. It was fun to see Ko's first time trying it, but you'd done it before without him. Uh, chronically, I'm gonna say I haven't. You came forward to join him, and uh, you flew out onto the ice easily. No, you did just fine. You were a little shaky, but you managed to catch yourself. You barely moved a foot before needing to grab the side. Shaky! I On wobbly legs, you somehow made your way over to Cove. He looked at you with an understanding smile. We'll both work on it? Yeah. It's kind of amazing we're seriously ice skating right now, but this is what we decided to do. I should stop being surprised over everything. Let's skate! Okay. The two of you developed a cautious rhythm, drawing long, slow circles around the edge of the rink side by side. Yep, that's how you- yep. Neither of you were experts. In fact, it was hard to tell who was worse. Uh, there were no complaints from either party when the pace was kept slow, or even stopped entirely whenever one of you needed to grab onto the ledge again. Um, despite how ungraceful of a pair you were, it was fun. White puffs of air released from you and Cove as you laughed and cheered each other on for the smallest achievement. There were also plenty of moments spent uh, clinging onto each other for added warmth against the unrelenting chill of the space. Eventually, you noticed Kova exhale deeply. He was getting tired. He sc you scooted, uh, you scooted up to him, uh, ready to take another breather as he rested his arms onto the bar in front of him. Hey, would it be alright to ask why you chose this place? What made it the favorite out of everything? 
It doesn't matter why. I'm just curious. I thought it'd be the most fun to do with you. I wanted to really see you out of your comfort zone. I've always wanted to try ice skating. I picked randomly. I don't know, honestly. Sincerely, I picked randomly. Uh, but let's say this one. <laughs> I asked Siri, heads or tails, and went. <laughs> it just went with that. But to be fair, I was between two of them, so I didn't pick fully randomly. It was just half randomly. Cool. You could tell Cove was feeling pretty pleased with himself by the way his eyebrows rose and his smile curved. One of his suggestions was something he wanted to do regardless, and he was considering that a success. Uh, with a second wind coming over Cove, he was ready to get back on out onto the icy fray. You joined him without hesitation. The hours slid right past you, and you just uh, and just like that, it was suddenly time to call it a day. After returning the borrowed skates, Cove and you ventured back onto the California air. Even though the sun was almost behind the horizon, it was still uh, palpably warmer than inside the rink. Cove rushed over to his car, his shivering hand clutched to yours. You let him pull you forward in his mad dash to the vehicle. Doors were open and closed, seats were taken, an engine switched on, and he turned to Max. At that, Cove finally relaxed. Your foray into the freezing cold had ended, and nicely at that. Da da da. A ways into the drive, Cove glanced towards your direction. You stretched your arms as you shifted in the seat, waiting patiently for him to say what was on his mind. So... I know this was unexpected, but thanks for coming along. Yeah, it really was. It was fun, but still the worst attempt at a surprise ever. Thank you for doing, uh, for going through the trouble to plan this. Any day with you is a good one. You smiled. Any day with you is a good one. Really? Any at all? Yeah, of course. There was a quiet pause where you contently watched Cove. It wasn't hard to imagine the blush that was likely trailing over his cheeks. I'm glad. The drive continued in comfortable silence. Cove wore a content expression on his face that warmed your heart. Doing things like this with Cove, he made you happy. Your heart skipped a beat thinking about how mutual the, uh, the mutual, uh, how mutual the feeling seemed to be. Watching the passing scenery out the window, you relaxed into the seat. The time sped by. It wasn't too long before Cove pulled into his driveway. Sighing happily, you got out of the car while Cove came around to where you were standing. He stood there a moment, rolling a pebble under his shoe. I'll see you tomorrow? Yeah. Thanks. If you're not ready, I'm just, I don't know what to expect. After that, you and Cove parted ways for the rest of the day. Even when you fell uh, back to your normal routine, your mind refused to stop buzzing with the memory of your little adventure. I'm just waiting. I feel like I'm just waiting for something to happen. As you crawl into bed and close your eyes, you were back in the best parts of today. You hoped Cove's surprise would continue just a bit longer in continuing your dreams. After breakfast the next morning, you were sitting with your moms and Liz. Uh, while you were mildly listening to, listening to the conversation, the side of your face squished into the palm of your hand, the doorbell rang. Oh? I'll get it. Mom passed uh, by you to the front door. Your eyes lazily followed her, then you turned your attention to Ma and Liz. Uh, they were still lightheartedly chatting. You weren't sure about what. Your focus snapped back when your name was called from across the room. Hey Ace, you have a guest. On your way to the front door, Mom gave your shoulder a pat as she returned to the living room. When she moved by, you saw who was at the door. It was Cove, again. A smile stretched out across his face at the, the moment your eyes met. Hi. Hey, Cove, sweetie. Instantly, you looked over your shoulder to see Ma several feet away, but within uh, eye shot of the door, she waved. When you faced Cove again, he was looking at the ground shyly. It reminded you of the last time you had seen him the night before. That was all the push you needed to step outside, closing the door behind you for some privacy. Uh, hi, what's going on? What do you have up your sleeve today? You coming to the door all the time? It's starting to get weird. <laughs> I just want to keep laughing about it. <laughs> you realize how ridiculous that sounds, right? Yes. Yeah, I know. That doesn't stop it from being true. And you're the one who made re uh, reasonable actions unheard of. <laughs> Ghost mouth pulled into a bent smile and he shrugged. Then Cove chuckled awkwardly. He didn't quite meet your eye as he pulled out uh, another gift from behind his back. Surprise, want to go to the theater with me? What? You blinked and then switched uh, to staring at him with bewilderment. Cove's eyes narrowed cons uh, conspiratorially. <laughs> the real surprise was that I'm going to invite you to all three places. You never had to choose only one. I just needed to make sure that they didn't sound completely terrible. 
That's what Queen Matt was just in such an easy choice. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Cause you, yeah, okay, yeah, fair, wow! <laughs> That's why it was such an easy choice. Mmm. <laughs> Damn, okay. <laughs> I just needed to make sure that they didn't sound completely terrible. The longer Ko spoke, the quieter his voice became. He shyly scratched at the side of his cheek. And to check if you'd be free, so surprise, again. You serious? You burst into laughter. You're so sweet. You don't have to do that. You remain wordlessly staring. You're so sweet. <laughs> it's true. His face grew red with a blush. Shyly, go, uh, looked away from you. Uh, uh, do you like what I got you? Go nudge the present in his hand towards you, hoping that you'd take it. Until now, you hadn't completely registered it. It was a carefully chosen telescope lens. I do like it. Thank you. I love it. You're so thoughtful, but you definitely are full of surprises all of a sudden. You're doing so much. I feel a little bad. <laughs> it's true, but I do love it. Ghost mouth pulled into a beaming smile that reached his eyes. Chuckling, you took the gift. I'm really glad you like it. Are you going to accept the other part too? Yeah, I'll go, with the I'll go to the theater with you. Goat bounced a bit on, on the toes of his feet as he leaned over to kiss you. It was light, but you could feel his smile pressing into you uh, and every bit of happiness radiating off of him. Thanks for coming. I'll be in the car. You can go get ready. All right. Ah! You sped back inside and spotted your family still sitting around the table. They all turned and smiled at you. So, what's the plan for today? At that, you froze mid step. Not a single word was coming to you, so instead of letting them watch your face grow redder, you bolted up the stairs. <laughs> Avoiding the question! Avoiding the question! The soft sound of their laughter followed you to your room. <laughs> Avoiding the question! It didn't take you long to get ready and dash out the front door. Go was waiting for you as promised, and you both set out for uh, D2 of his surprise outings. And this time, it was actually a, it actually was a surprise. So when I looked it up, there were two shows we could pick from uh, around this time. One was a historical romance with nobility, fancy outfits, drama, and stuff. The other seemed like a modern day story, something set near a lake and at a bed and breakfast with comedy. It's kind of wacky, I guess. So? What do you think? I'm going with the first one. Let's have Chance decide. That's more exciting, though. That's more exciting. It's a he laughed, his head sh uh, shook a bit as he looked ahead. Alright, why not? Go reach forward and fished out a, a coin from the little shelf area in front of the gear shift. He handed it to you. Give it a flip. Heads we see the romance, and tails we see the comedy. Chuckling, you shut it up. It turned one, two, three times before falling back into the palm of your hand. The comedy. Cool, that settles that. <laughs> That's a lot more exciting than just choosing. <laughs> Clearly, that's my preferred method of making choices, so... You have an agreement, still twisting the coin uh, with your fingers. Then you uh, place it back into the little shelf area Ko got it from. If we end up not liking the show, at least we can blame the coin. <laughs> exactly. Ko cracked a smile and so did you. You were already enjoying the trip. Alright. I'm getting kind of excited. I wonder what it'll be like. I haven't seen, uh, seen a live play before. I, have, I haven't been to a performance before either. Um, ah, but <laughs> I'm like, I I'm gonna, yeah, sure, I have. And I liked it. I thought it was all right. I wasn't really a fan, but I'm doing this for you today. I liked it. Your eyes shone with delight, remembering the dazzling lights in the grand stage. The theater was a treat. Uh, you certainly enjoyed. Here we go. The rest of the ride flew by, and soon enough, you were at the theater with Code by your side. Tickets in hand, you both went inside. Uh, shuffling down the aisle, Ko found the right seats. You were getting settled when the lights began to them. We made it just in time. Your voice came out in a whisper, glancing at Ko as I'm staring right ahead with eyes uh, growing wider with intrigue. Then the actors started coming out onto the stage. The show set the scene, uh, telling the story of a married couple and the bed and breakfast they inherited. It was a busy life filled with a constant stream of new and interesting guests. Hand in hand with uh, with that were the shenanigans that plagued their business. That uh, but that uh, never stopped the couple. They intended to tackle any problem. 
The play continued on, and at one point, Cove reached out and, uh, and covered your hand with his. Featherlight, you felt him stroke the back of your hand with his thumb. You smiled at that, flipping your hand over, you held on to him, you leaned against him, leaning against him, you turned, uh, you turned your hand to hold his. Uh, lean. Sighing happily, you inched closer to Cove and rested the side of your head on his shoulder. You soaked in his comforting warmth. You became absorbed into the story and performances, uh, and you weren't the only one. Several times throughout, you could hear Cove's familiar laughter next to you. Yay! Good play! When the play finally came to a close, the audience broke into applause. Cove clapped for the actors until the noise died down. Then he spoke for the first time since the event began. It's over. Nodding, you followed Cove out, uh, out of the theater. The sun was hanging low in the sky. I had so much fun. I can't believe what a good time that was. But really, I might have to come back uh, sometime to see the other one. Go scratched his cheek uh, con uh, contemplatively. I sort of thought it was going to be harder to keep up with the... What's the phrase? Suspension of disbelief? Mm-hmm. The actors were right there, putting on a show. I thought it'd be uh, too much uh, to believe it was really happening. Not bad. But I felt more into uh, but I felt more into it than with a lot of movies. I could totally picture the world they lived in. Amused, you nodded along and listened to Cove's animated commentary. I'm still thinking about it, even though it's over. Imagine if that was us, working together to run a little place of our own and dealing with all those crazy guests. People would come and go as they're passing through the area, giving us new stories to tell. This is so sweet. <laughs> But at the end of the day, it would just be the two of us who stayed forever, sticking it, uh, sticking it out and making a life there. He had stars in his, uh, in his eyes as he fantasized about the events of the story. I would love that. I'm over the life I'm already living. Are you envisioning us being married like the couple in the story? You joked, bed and breakfast do exist in real life. We could get one. You know? <laughs> it's like, we could realistically do that. <laughs> Go match your beaming smile. It was easy to picture you and Cove in those roles. Bashful by your admission, you looked away. It would be incredible to live a story like like the one in the play. A few quiet moments passed and you noticed a distant look on Cove's face. He shook his head like he was trying to send a thought away. What is it? Trying to really picture a completely new life in a new place actually feels kind of weird now that I'm doing it. I'm not exactly sure how to explaining, I, explain. It's exciting, but also sad. I'm thinking too seriously about this dumb idea, I guess. But if I don't remember anything from this world, then it would be pointless that I had a life before. And if it, and if it did really happen, I would probably, I would probably, I probably would be surrounded by totally new people. I wouldn't have you with me anymore. Surprise! You sucked in a breath. Cove laughed shyly. That's the fun part of imagining it all was uh, that you were there by default. Just getting to be somewhere else on my own wouldn't be nice no matter how cool the place was. Hmm, it's settled then. I'll just have to look, uh, I'll just have to look for you if I wind up having another chance at life or magically end up in some other world. I hope you try to find me too. Nervous, Cove's eyes didn't quite meet yours. His cheeks and ears were solidly red at this point. That's so sweet. I find you, it's obvious. Of course I'd search for you. I'll forget about you. I'll see how it goes when your life might keep me busy. You're getting a bit too worried uh, out there for me. It's not something you should worry about. You nodded, you didn't know how to respond. I'd find you, it's obvious. No amount of space and time can stop us. <laughs> Thank you, Ace. In that case, it'll work out after all. Definitely. He took a, a deep breath and stretched his arms high over his head. He then turned his head to your direction and pointed with his thumb to his car. We better get back to our real world, uh, to, to our real world now, huh? It's getting late and I think we're the only ones still out here. You spun around getting a good look at your surroundings. Cove was right. All the other cars that were out here after the show ended were long gone. Uh, yeah, we are. It surprised you uh, how much you really lost track of everything for a while. You even failed to notice how dark it was until now. Come on. Uh, let's go home. After that, you made your way into Cove's car. He set course for your neighborhood. Your legs felt stiff from standing still and talking for so long, but it was worth it. The car ride home uh, went by far too fast. You and Cove were in good spirits and spent the ride chatting and laughing, bouncing around various topics. But you didn't ask uh, the question that sat all day in the back of your mind. Why was Cove doing all this in the first place? I'd like to know that too. Again, you both parted ways for the night in the neighborhood street. You watched Cove uh, head inside with a quick wave. 
You were halfway to your own house when a familiar voice called out to you. Turning on your heel, you spotted Mr. Holden. He lightly uh, uh, jogged over to talk. Hey. How are you? I'm good. Great. I was just getting uh, home from work. Uh, what are you up to? Or rather, what were you up to today? Uh, me and Kof went to the theater. You did, huh? Sounds fun. You nodded and smiled softly, but didn't have much else to add. It got quiet. Mr. Holden frowned. He rubbed the back of his neck and studied you for several silent moments. Right, so, Ace, what's going on there? Something's going on, isn't it? Huh? Wait, what makes you ask? There's not a problem, right? So? I'll answer your question if you answer mine, deal? Sighing, you nodded. Okay. What is happening? <laughs> this is- this has got me so confused. <laughs> I don't know what to expect anymore. <laughs> Mr. Holden was probably the only person who could give you any solid insights to what Cove was doing. What's the story? The truth is, Cove... Cove's been doing a lot for me lately. Way more than usual. For two days in a row now, he's planned special dates and gifts too. I don't know why. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. Cove's father nodded con uh, contemplatedly. He accepted the situation easily. That actually makes a lot of sense, considering... Is this some secret you shouldn't be sharing, considering what? You waited for him? Yeah, I'm, are we supposed to? I'm so... Uh, I'm saving, because I still kind of want to know. But we're overwriting this. I realize that this is... Whoops. Feeling some testiness, your uh, teeth sank into your bottom lip. On the other hand, Mr. Holden chuckled. <laughs> If it's supposed to be a secret, Cove's been awful at hiding it. He's doing it out in the open, so I don't think that's what he cares about. Your head tilted just a bit to the side as you watched Mr. Holden. You were curiously you were honestly curious what his side to this was. As long as it was alright to hear, you wanted to know. Yeah. Exactly. As long as it's fine, then I yeah, I am very curious. I want to know. There was a pause. He was unsure what to say next, or how to phrase it at least. Okay, I'm lost, but all right. Honestly, I've been the littlest bit worried about Cove lately. He's gotten really up in his head about something. But it's not exactly a bad thing. It's tough to know how to even bring it up. I'm not sure if I, if I should try to have a talk about it. The longer he spoke, the wider your eyes grew with concern. There was more happening than a few meaningless hangouts. It's okay. He raised his hand in a calming motion when he noticed your reaction. Let me explain. Yes, please. Uh, I noticed Coop's been getting lost in thought more often recently, and he sometimes has his laptop out in the living room. He leaves it laying around on the couch or puts it on the coffee table. I have a clear view of it from there, and I can obviously see him looking, uh, looking stuff up on it. Coop keeps searching one phrase and different wordings of it too, then he'll spend ages clicking through the linked results. The line is, how do you make someone happy? Just that again and again. You had to consciously close your mouth after that. You didn't know what to even say after hearing that revelation, Mr. Holden gently beamed. I was not ready. Uh, I was not ready at all. I can't even fully react yet. My brain has not cut up fully. Just gonna keep reading and then eventually I think I'll react further. to read and then I couldn't. Whoa, give it take two. Is Iggy such a ugh, is Iggy such a good kid? He continued but his tone was rueful. <laughs> I'm still nah. unfortunately I can relay all too well to that conundrum. Who am I to judge, right? 
This is all distracted and an exaggerated way to lighten the mood back up. No, no, no. I'm still as shocked no matter how much you lighten the mood. <laughs> okay. Before I was thinking Gove might have gotten into a fight with somebody, and now it sounds like I was way off the mark. Go clearly has other plans on the, on the brain. I've, mm, I'm even more confused on whether this is something I should get into or not. You know, actually, I was wondering if you could have a little chat with him about what's going on. It sounds like you're at the core of Cove's sudden study sessions, so he might feel at, uh, more at ease talking about it, or more embarrassed, but he'd probably do, still- But, can't even- mm, But he'd still probably do it. I would really appreciate it. Your gaze trailed over to the Holden residence. Mr. Holden made a very good point. You had to admit, you nodded. Good kid. Thank you. <laughs> Wish one tries. You shook your head with a smile and started walking towards where Cove went. After a few steps, you realized that Mr. Holden wasn't falling. You glanced back at him. I'm gonna hang out here for a bit. Make sure, uh, make sure you have some space to talk without a parent in the way. The door is probably unlocked, so go right in. Okay. I still have, still haven't caught up. My brain, my brain is struggling right now so much. Out of all the things I could have expected, it was not this. It was not this. And like I'm at the we're on, we're on the same book. We're near the same page, but we're not exactly on the same page. Like we're on different paragraphs right now. The, my, my brain and the certain and the current situation, we're on different paragraphs, but we're getting there. <laughs> but you hesitated for a moment. Mr. Holden's smile faded. Thanks for, uh, thanks for talking with me. This has, uh, this has been on my mind too, and I think it'll be good to ask Cove if everything's okay. Absolutely. It'll all shake out right in the end, I'm sure. Uh, Mr. Olden grew much happier than he was a moment ago. Feeling ready, you turned right around and went into the house. All right. I, uh... All right, here we go. <laughs> uh, Cope was sitting on the edge of the co uh, couch with his aforementioned laptop opened. He peeked up at you with a puzzled look and then it melted into a smile. I thought you were my dad. Did you forget something? No, you shook your head. I hope you're not too disappointed it's just me instead of your dad. Your father and I were actually talking a minute ago. Uh, what are you doing in your laptop? Uh, you sh shook your head. Oh. You tried opening your mouth to speak, but nothing came out. Yeah, fair enough. Been like that. Mm-hmm. Goes eyebrows forward with confusion. You were struggling to put together what you wanted to say next. Fair enough. And the conversation was growing more awkward by the second. You sighed. Why are you here? Cautious, uh, cautiously you ask Cove about his searching. Lightheartedly you ask Cove about his searching. Bluntly you ask Cove about his searching. Sure. Sure. You know what? I don't know. Don't panic. But can we talk about something? Goes eyes widen, finding the urge to immediately panic at your seriousness, but he nodded. You tried to smile reassuringly, you could tell he wasn't convinced at first. It's not a problem, I swear. Okay. Go closed his laptop and laid it on the couch cushion next to him. He got up, shuffled past the coffee table, and stopped right in front of you. He spoke in a hushed tone, only hearable because of the, uh, uh, the new closeness. Are you alright? Yeah, I was wondering, well, if everything was alright with you. You've been making these big plans out of nowhere, and your dad mentioned that you've been kind of distracted lately. I wanted to know, why have you been looking in- Oh god, we're just going straight into it, I'm just so- <laughs> Why am I freaking out over here on the other end of the line? <laughs> why am I freaking out? <laughs> oh, I can get through this, I'm- <laughs> I'm not scared. <laughs> I'm so strong. <laughs> Why am I freaking out? <sighs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I don't even know it. I don't even know, and I'm not ready. I just know I'm not. 
Oh, put on a brave face. Mm. Put on a brave face. Um, can you notice that? Are you mad? No, I guess I really was distracted. I didn't think people around would actually be paying attention or taking note of things. He chuckled awkwardly at himself. Hov, will you tell me why you felt like doing that so much? Ace. Hov looked at you with large, earnest eyes. I did it because I want you to be happy. I want you to be happy too. You don't have to do something big. Uh, you don't need to do some big expensive surprise for that. You just be yourself. You already make me happy. That's seriously it. You're killing me, Cole Holden. Stunned, your eyes started tearing up. You didn't know how to react. How do we react? That was one. <laughs> You are killing me, but I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> I'm over here freaking out. <laughs> Go started out another laugh and the tension in his shoulders eased. Th thank you for thinking that, for telling me? I don't know. He was completely uh, frazzled on what to say. His rambling put a grin on your face. His gaze fell to the floor and he defaulted to rubbing at his arm. Sorry. I wasn't trying to make you or dad concerned. I didn't want to upset anyone. Sorry. It's okay. You meant it, but the words came out far too quiet. You tried speaking again. What happened to make you do it now? I don't know. With a deep frown, Kov, uh, Kov looked back at you and repeated the phrase. Each time, the inflection was different. Like he intended to say something different, but was coming up with the same non-reply. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything. He ran a hand through his hair, trying to understand his own motivations. I guess maybe with everything that's uh, that's been happening and everything that's coming soon, this kind of hit me that we're neighbors. A quick snort of air came out of your noise of your nose from his conclusion. Yeah, I mean you've lived right across the street from me for ten years. The only other kid who grew up in this whole neighborhood is your older sister. This is weak smile bent. And then there's our parents. They sure were putting in the efforts uh, for the two of us to get to know each other. Uh -huh. My dad literally paid you to be my friend. We're never letting this go. Go shook his head with a laugh. The nostalgia. His gaze was far away as he nostalgically reflected on the history you had. Basically, everything in our, in our lives was set up for us to be together. It was always effortless. And why not? It practically went without saying that we'd be around each other, but it won't be like that forever. Our parents can't always be there to arrange things. We can't live in, in the little world of the street forever. Do I even know how to make it uh, make it work when I don't have every advantage possible? I've made you happy in the past, but could I keep doing it? What even is it that I do that makes you happy? I'm freaking out. I, uh, I don't even. Uh, it's a good freak out, but a freak out. He started to run a hand through his hair again, but he stopped part way through. He looked at you earnestly. It was like breathing. When when you're just going through life, you do, you do what you're doing without even thinking, and then something reminds you that you're breathing, and you become way more conscious of it. That's a really good way of describing it. Being with you is the same. I do what I normally do without pondering deeply on it, but now all this st all this stuff made me start thinking about it. I... Then I couldn't stop thinking about it. Go sighed and stood up straighter. His eyes watched you softly and you felt a surge of warmth in your chest. Ace, I love you. I felt like I, n I needed to try harder to make an effort for you for the relationship we had. I had to and well, that's what I did. Go scratch the back of his neck, he looked sheepish now. It seemed like such a good idea in my head, it made complete sense, but maybe it was dumb. You punched his arm affectionately, you threw your arms around him in a hug, you kissed him, you started crying, you laughed. Mm, come here. Crashing into a cove, you wrapped your arms tightly around him and buried your face into his chest. You nearly knocked the air out of his lungs moving so fast, but Go soon recovered and held you back. Stepping back, you took a deep breath. Cove shif uh, shifted how he was standing and watched you ba and back uh, and watched you bashfully. 
No, you'll always make me happy. You don't have to worry about that. I love you too. You're so precious. You're a bit moron. You know, it's okay to tell me when you're feeling like this, right? <laughs> it's true. All oh, I want to say, a picture of these. Uh, <laughs> the option, going on a huge long ass rant where I say like five of these. Um, <sighs> I'm overthinking it. Yeah. You watched him with bleeding eyes. You didn't want him to keep things like this to himself. He nodded carefully. I'm glad. I'm here for you. Cove, you're my boyfriend. Even if us meeting is thanks to circumstances out of our control, that doesn't matter. This is what I wanted. This is- yes. We're close because of who we really are. We found something in each other that made us want to be together. Nothing can take that away. There was a pause where neither of you were certain who was going to speak next. Cove sniffled. Wow. Thank you, Ace. Thanks for looking out for me, even when I didn't even notice I was doing something worth checking in on. You're amazing. You're welcome. Someone has to do it. It's no problem. You nodded. It's no problem. And you meant it. Kova was always there for you when you needed him. You breathed a happy sigh of relief and that you were able to work this through. Kova chuckled. Now that everything was out in the open, his words were lighter. I gotta thank my dad, too. I can always count on him to be around. I have such good people in my life. He smiled softly. Cove withdrew, uh, withdrew a bit, looking shy. Um. Can I... Uh, can I still show up tomorrow and invite you on the last surprise outing? Your smile grew so big that you had a feeling that your face was likely gonna hurt. I'd like that. Cove Brian hearing that from you, but you couldn't think of anything better than seeing the, uh, seeing the earnest look in his eyes. He simply wanted to spend time having fun with you. I can't wait. Cove leaned down so he could kiss you. Your, as your lips parted, you saw that, that his were curled in a smile. He wrapped his arms around you and tucked you in close. <sighs> You're really nice. Your lips gladly mes met his one more. Uh, once more. Uh, Cove smelled good, like a, like a honey mixture of fresh citrus and sea breeze. You'd mutually ensnared each other with the kiss, unwilling to let it end until Kova abruptly glanced around as he was see as if he was seeing the location for the first time. He ducked his head, bashfully peering at you from the corner of his eyes. Um, we're kind of in the middle of the living room. He mumbled the words, his grip on you tightening. My dad might come in soon, but uh, you know, my room is right over there, so maybe we could go there if you wanted to? I'm going with just that. We don't have to keep going. Okay, we can do that. Uh, yeah, right. Let's go. You see, uh, you see the sand left the way. You're not in agreement. You shake your head. Okay, we can, we can do that. He swallowed audibly at your answer, but he didn't take it back. All right. His face was uh, verging on crimson as he took your hand. Smiling, you gripped his hand tightly. Together, you hurried down the hall to his room. Yay, bro! I love these star shaped. Thing, star stamp uh, the curtains uh, words failing uh, uh, <laughs> just been stumbling over sentences for the fastest ah uh, you're the one who opened the door as you both pushed through as one so smoothly closed the door after him using the heel of the heel of his foot not allowing his hand or attention to be diverted from you uh, for even a moment he took you into his arms fully, holding you close to his chest. You inhaled another waft of his uh, invigorating fragrance as you stared into his open, eager eyes. I'm not ready at all! I just glimpsed at these options! This has been an absolute roller coaster. I don't know what to tell you. My, I am everywhere at once. I'm, <laughs> I am feeling so much stuff at the same time. Wow. <laughs> well, let's get on with it. Hey, <laughs> beautiful, stupid and beautiful. You're so hot, you're really sexy, you're perfect. You're just absolutely perfect. No other words could describe him. Go sputter while covering his face with a hand. From between his fingers, you caught his eyes closing as he spoke. Your words of praise rendering him unable to look at you directly. 
But you could also see his smile spread wider with every syllable you uttered. He uh, squeaked with delight, unable to construct a sentence or even form a single word. You grinned at his reaction. <sighs> oh my god! <laughs> you sprinkled Cove's mouth with short kisses, always coming back for more. Cove, uh, Cove responded in, in kind each time, aching for your touch. The tease of getting only a brief connection seemed to make him crave, uh, crave you even more. His hands roamed up and down your back, memorizing the outline of your body. It, sp it spurred you on, the gap, the gap of time between each kiss shrinking until it was nearly as quick as the kisses themselves. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Taking a shirt in, in your fist, one hand on his waist and the other on his, uh, and the other on his chest, you pressed him to, over towards his bunk. Co stumbled over his feet. It wasn't easy moving backwards as someone else set the pace, but he soldiered on. Once you judged that it was close enough for, uh, uh, to the bed for a soft landing, you opened your hand against his chest and toppled him over. He didn't resist, falling back onto the bed with a gasp. You climbed on top of him. The mattress gave gently under the pressure. Your knees uh, sunk slightly as you planted them on either side of Ko's body. This is so wow. I'm just, uh, what can I even say? Ko's <laughs> breath catched a much quieter sigh slipping from his mouth as the surprise gave way to the realization of the position you were both in. Yep. He looked up into your face with a nervous excitement. Uh... <laughs> oh, again, I get really bashful. <laughs> you peppered his neck with kisses and tiny bites in equal measure. Your teeth graced against his skin, pressing hard enough to make him shiver, then compensating with a soft kiss. Go side dream uh, dreamily, letting himself uh, get lost in the moment. He instinctively pressed his body up against yours while, fu uh, while full of yearning for you. I can't do it. <laughs> Reaching down, you ran a hand along his thigh. He then he tensed and gave you a wobbly smile, as if feeling bad about how much he was uh, he was impacted by the sensation. As you continued to stroke your hand along his leg, he bit his lip, eyes fluttering closed. Cove reached over and let his fingertips go down your spine. As you as you sighed, pleased, he allowed his palm to brush against you and cup your butt. Your grip on him tightened immediately, and he left you just as speechless as you had done to him. <sighs> pa passing away. I, mm, <laughs> you shifted your weight on uh, your weight on the bed to one arm so that you could trail a hand down his shirt. You felt friction from the rough weave of the fabric against your fingertips. His chosen way to style his stop. Uh, his stop. Ugh. Tucked into his pants presented an obstacle. Pitching the shirt between your fingers, you tugged it loose from the waistband so you could reach underneath. He made no attempt to stop you or get away, so you slipped a hand beneath his top, your palm gra grazing over his stomach. Ko's breath came out faster in hard pants. He brought his forehead to rest against yours. You felt each hu uh, hot puff of breath tickle your face. You moved your hand upwards, reaching his pecs. Go gripped your uh your dress within his fist, as twisting and pulling it at, uh, pulling it as you touched him. He mumbled something, even with your face so near his, close enough that you could account each uh, every tiny eyelash. You couldn't make out anything resembling a word. You translated an, uh, instead based on the tone. He was enjoying it. Your hand roamed, your fingers uh, rising and falling across the grooves of his chest, occasionally squeezing tight muscle to watch Cove's trembling reactions. This is amazing. <laughs> Do I have to say how amazing this is? It's amazing. <laughs> ah! <laughs> As you finally retrieved your hand from under Gov's shirt, he let uh, he let out another heavy breath. Gov enveloped you in his arms completely, uh, strapping across your torso and back in order to bring you in, cl in close for a kiss. As he kissed you, the pressure from his mouth and his arms increased. You could feel his legs shifting along your sides. Passing away for personal reasons, you and me both. <laughs> My God.
this has all around been so unexpected and for so many reasons and I'm just not just casually freaking out just casually passing away in my chair right now wow And then he used his newfound uh, hold on you to roll over without a warning. You abruptly laid flat on your back. The mattress beneath you woke opened you down from above. <laughs> it knocked the little breath you had left uh, right out of you. The kiss ended, but he had yet to open his eyes. You were both frozen. It was only when he slowly let his half-lidded ocean eyes look at your face that he understood what he'd done. Thank you. You got to watch Copperhead should dawn on his face as he first frowned, puzzled by the change in view. It was then eased by understanding, followed by uh, mortification as his face flooded with color. Oh my god. Yeah. Same. Me too. Relatable. <laughs> he extracted himself abruptly but carefully, trying to avoid pushing, uh, pushing down on you any further as he got up, primarily taking a seat on the edge of the bed. He didn't say anything else. He didn't need to. From the way he was studiously looking anywhere but at but at you, you knew you knew at once that he was too embarrassed to go any further. The blush that reached all the way to the tips of his ears was merely extra confirmation. Kovat accidentally showed more protectiveness than it seemed he was ready to admit to. I'm so rid of it. That was great though. His embarrassment was contagious. You sat up, brushing yourself off just to unleash some nervous energy. Uh, Gov looked down at the floor as he tucked his shirt back in, a shy grin taking over his face. He cleared his throat, trying to regain some control over the situation. I- I wish you could stay, but it's getting late, and you need to head home and get some rest. He looked at you, attempting to feign an innocent expression. I mean... What if something just happened to happen tomorrow? <laughs> you had to laugh, go back to smile, acknowledging his poor attempt at, subter <laughs> at subterfuge. How about I walk you back? You shook your head, laying a hand on Coves as if as if holding him in place. It's all right. You're already home. You can stay. Then let me walk you to the door, at least. All right. I'm still freaking out. <laughs> yes. You silently headed back into the living room together, comfortable with each other's presence. You stopped by the front door. Good night, is. His voice was soft, like a comforter you just you just wanted to wrap around yourself forever. But Cove was right. You had to go for today. Good night, Cove. With that, you opened the door and stepped outside. And frankly passed away. Uh, the, when you walked into the street, you noticed that Mr. Holden was still standing out there. The conversation went great. <laughs> He looked up at the sound of the door closing behind you, his phone in hand, and smiled as he see uh, as he sized up the situation. Oh? You were in there a while. I hope that's good news. It is. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. <laughs> Everything's fantastic. I got it all taken care of. I'm sorry for keeping you out here so long. Were you really gonna stand out here in, uh, in the dark until I left? Thanks for letting me know about this. It's all better now. I'm sorry to keep you out here for so long. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops! Uh, he waved it off. I didn't mind giving you guys a wide uh, berth. We had no clue how sensitive the issue was. I wasn't about to risk messing it up by poking around where I wasn't needed. Besides, I was chatting with uh, with Gregorio, Derek's dad, my very professional business partner, uh, about very professional business things. It's fine. Okay, it all worked out, so that's good. Great, glad to hear it. Everything truly resolved, you exchanged goodnight wishes with Mr. Holden before continuing the very, br the very brief trip home. Uh, before going onward to pass away. Uh, not wishing to disturb anyone, you quickly snuck inside and gently pushed the door close behind you. As it clicked into place with a, mini with a minimum of fuzz, you let out a sigh. Your mind buzzed as you climbed the steps up to your room. Kova had done so much just to make you happy and you knew he'd be back tomorrow with another big surprise. Let's just hope Ko's window didn't lead to the street because Ko certainly didn't have time to close his curtains. Very true. <laughs> uh, it was 
slightly like to that side of the room and the and it's towards that side of the room so hopefully it was fine let's just ignore that issue mm. Uh, you were determined to fully appreciate his effort. You wanted to prepare a gift to surprise. <gasps> you resolved uh, enough was enough. You were going to uh, change the plans and make him surprise. You resolved enough was enough. You were going to thank him with a gift and surprise him with a change of plans. I want to make him a gift. Goodbye, you took gifts already. An odd, uh, an odds, uh, an odds are a third was coming. It was time to turn the tables and have something ready to give him. At this hour. That was certainly said than done. Most stores were long closed and Co would be here bright and early to surprise you tomorrow morning. Uh, that ruled out purchasing a gift the way uh, that he'd done for you. Luckily, you'd known Cove long enough to see a solution to this problem. Yes. Uh, your neighbor was always a happy boy when he was given food. You were sure you could rustle something fitting uh, the description out of, you, out of the kitchen one way or another. Feeling invigorated, you spun around and sped back downstairs. It was time to put your plan into action and hope that nobody in my family wakes up to see me randomly do stuff in the kitchen. Uh, you were a great chef. You could make something he loved. You were a decent cook. You could make something he loved. Uh, you could manage cooking mostly. You could figure out how to make something he loved. You struggled with cooking. You'd never have. Uh, you never had to find some. You'd have to find some way to make something he loved. You were a disaster in the kitchen. You weren't sure how you'd manage to make something he loved. You were going. You were going to find something he loved that didn't need preparation. I think. Uh, I could figure it out. It then hit you, your parents. Your mom knew how to cook wonderfully and you could easily persuade them to give you a hand with this. It had to be done. Hi, yes. <laughs> you seized up your options. With an early start, you'd be able to pull up together something simple in the morning. If you wanted to go for something more elaborate and time consuming, you'd need to do it right now. You just to bake cinnamon rolls, you were gonna make banana peanut butter and honey sandwich, you'd make them some homemade fudge. All of these sound great. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm between the cinnamon rolls and the fudge. I know that this is a reference, but <laughs> I'm 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 endly aware that this is exactly the sandwich from the other one. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. I'm pretty. I'm pretty confident about that. I'm making homemade fudge. I can make homemade fudge. Just earlier this summer, you bought him some. He'd been a stat- I love our flashback. The a white glow of flashback. A, a white glow of flashback. Uh, he'd been ecstatic with the gift. You could only imagine how delighted he'd be with some that you'd gone through the trouble of making yourself. Plus, hopefully simple enough, you look at your mom's in, in their room uh, on the ground floor and explained your plight. <laughs> I need to make fudge. <laughs> You got a fair amount of ribbing, but they agreed to give you a hand. Thank you, moms. Ma even had a recipe she swore by that you could use. Yes! She flicked through an old cookbook full of clippings and swapped recipes scribbled on notepaper instead of direct, uh, directing you and mom like a real chef. You poured the ingredients into a saucepan and mixed them together over, the, over a high heat, watching the color darken into a golden brown as the sugar caramelized. Stunning flashback. Our white glow of flashback. Uh, soon, the kitchen was full of sweet smells as heat joined the ingredients into one. That must smell so good. Making homemade fudge must, mu it must smell great. Ugh. The, you know, you know, it's the type of thing where, like, my fi one of my favorite parts about, like, making gingerbread or, like, buying gingerbread is the smell of gingerbread. Like, once you're- if you buy it, it still smells, because gingerbread cookies smell so nice all the time. And then, uh, when you're making them while they're in the oven, it smells so nice. The kitchen smells divine when, <laughs> when you have gingerbread cookies in the oven. <laughs> Soon the kitchen was full of sweet smells as he- as he joined the ingredients into one. As you waited for it to reach the right temperature, your mind continuously drifted back to the trip of the farmer's market. You recalled the hustle and bustle of all the stalls and the way you and your very familiar neighbor ended, ended the day with mutual gifts in hand. Because we're wholesome like that. You chuckled, imagining how there was likely going to be a similar situation tomorrow. Didn't even realize that it, it parallels and then it parallels again. <laughs> Eventually, the striking red line on the thermometer brought you back to the present. Luckily, you didn't let it go too far. It was time. 
The cast iron saucepan was heavier than you'd expected now that it was full of rich molten goodness, but you managed to carefully pour it out and prepared it to set overnight. Uh, the teasing from your mom sprinkled uh, sprinkled into the process uh, sprinkled into the process was merc merciless. They had no idea why you so urgently needed to cook for Cove, but it may as well have been the funniest thing they had ever heard. Which honestly, at this point, <laughs> at this moment, yeah, it might as well be. Still, the gift needed to be just right, so you endured their good-natured jokes. When it was over, they patted you on the back. You dusted off your hands, satisfied with a job well done. With your mission accomplished, you headed back up to your room. Success, we made fudge. You took the steps lightly, feeling oyoed as you imagined how happy Ko would be with your unexpected gift. Ko was working so hard to make you happy. You dearly wanted your partner to be happy too. You could only hope your efforts would work as well for him as his plans were working for you. And suddenly, it was morning. Uh, you were up early the next day, ready and uh, ready and waiting for Cove's inedible, inevitable appearance. Your ears were perked listening for the doorbell, but instead what you heard was a familiar ring on the window pane! Yay! There was no need to look to, who, uh, to know who it was. Only one visitor used your window as his personal entranceway. Getting up, you headed over to let him in. You you gazed into your neighbor's uh your neighbor's face as you unfastened the window, opening it wide. He smiled at you, still crouched on the window ledge. Hi, I'm glad you're here. Surprise, surprise. Tired of using the front door already? <laughs> I'm just gonna keep with the window jokes. I've done window jokes two days in a row. I might as well do it three days in a row. Ghost laugh was as airy as the cotton candy sold on the boardwalk. He was in good spirits. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> I'm really keeping you on your toes. What will I do next? <laughs> he waggled his eyebrows at the joke as he stepped back to let him enter the room. <laughs> so also Today he clambered through with extra difficulty thanks to the object he was clutching securely. You guessed it was another gift. You really didn't need to bring me anything else, so what did you bring me next time? Thank you, you waited for him to bring it up. Yeah. Sure, he knew that you'd seen it and had probably reached your own conclusions, but he worked hard on his surprises. You wanted to play along. Exactly! I'm giving this a plus. If you were hard on it, he deserves that satisfaction of presenting it in whichever way he wants. Come smile sheepishly as he held out the present to you. With a bit of flair, he flipped open a folded uh, cloth that turned out to be a t-shirt uh, and wasn't with the logo of the company you'd applied to. Aww! You had no idea that these existed, let alone how Cove had managed to come by one. You'll be needing this. Your application's gonna be accepted for sure. His eyes were trained on you, searching for uh, your emotion on it. That's so wholesome! <laughs> no, I can't! I hope you like it. You guessed him, you hugged him, you felt tears welling in your eyes, you shook your head affectionately, you simply smiled at him. <laughs> come on. In no time at all, you'd close, in the, uh, you'd close the distance between you and brought your clips to his. Though startled, Cove happily returned the kiss while still holding your present carefully. Thank you, I definitely like it. This means a lot to me. You're so cute. I can't believe you. You are at a loss for words. <laughs> oh. He chuckled self-consciously as he gave a long look uh, to the meaningful gift he had selected. It was as if uh, it was growing heavier in his hands. I really do support your goals. I just want you to know that. Oh, I do. I do know. <laughs> Then you accepted the thoughtful present in your own grasp. Uh, only once he'd uh, transferred ownership uh, and cemented it with your approval, they'd cope straighten up and pull himself together. Well. Okay, well, would it be alright uh, for me to take you out today? We know, uh, we could, I don't know, go to the aquarium? <laughs> he smirked, already anticipating that you'd say yes. Of course, I'd go anywhere with you, only as long as it don't make you happy too. Alright, but you're lucky I've got time for you in my busy schedule. <laughs> this expression brightened further. That was exactly what he had hoped for. Thanks. No problem. You were glad to see how happy your acceptance had made him. But before Cove could whisk you away on another big outing, you made your own move. Yes! Your surprise would be better now than when you got back later that night. Actually... Before we go, I got something for you, too. I... what? what? <laughs> really? It was amazing how surprised he was. Kova had spent three days raining gifts and special trips on you, but he hadn't at all counted on you doing something in return. What is it? Stay here for a second and I'll show you. Okay. He watched you expectingly as you turned around to head downstairs. 
re you reached where the homemade fudge was waiting and collected the prize. As you flipped back around to your room, gift in hand, there was a smile playing out across your face. <laughs> the excitement is unmatched. I'm so excited. Go was patiently waiting where you'd left him, tapping his fingers against the side of his pants. Surprise, here it is. Hope you're hungry. I hope it's uh, enough for a boy like you. It's a thank you gift for everything. You let the present do the talking. Surprise. He looks curiously, barely believing that you'd gone to the effort to select a present for him at such short notice. He handed the gift over uh, for his inspection. His eyes widened as he saw the treat. I thought about what you'd like, and, well, I made you this. Also, my mom's did help, too. <laughs> it's fudge. You got me fudge? His eyes were shining as he took the box. You made me more fudge? He dove in at once, grabbing a slab and taking a couple bite, uh, big bites. He, a happy exhale escaped his, no his nose as he munched away. Mmm. Um, is it alright? Go kept chewing, gesturing apologetically to his occupied mouth. Finally, after what felt like an age, he swallowed. It's amazing. It's even better than the fudge from the farmers' market. Your mom is right. You really do spoil me. <laughs> you chuckled, recalling the way everyone had ganged up on you in Cove that day, but you couldn't deny the charges. How could you not spoil a guy like this? <laughs> Cove wiped his mouth with the back of his hand, now a little calmer after the initial burst of excitement. His feelings instead settled into an easy, warm affection. It's nice. Thank you for this. It's it's so nice of you. You're welcome. I Anything for you, Cove. Just do me a favor. Don't eat so fast. I like choked. I'm glad you liked it. You blushed from his praise. His features softened and you felt like you were being thoroughly appreciated. Uh, the food you gave was also uh, getting its due attention. You'd already gone in for a second serving. You couldn't blame his indulgence. That said, the amount you'd given him was enough for several servings. Far more than even Cove could usually finish at once. You made sure of it. <laughs> but as he continued to devour it, you were starting to suspect that polishing it all off was the goal. In spite of the generous portion, he was willing to try and eat it all in order to show you how much he liked the present. <laughs> You're gonna make yourself sick. It's okay to save some for later. I don't mind. Maybe this was idea a bad idea after all. You laughed at his attempt to prove himself. It's okay to save some for later. You could tell that he wanted to show how taken he was with the gift, but you n you've not presented it to him as a challenge to be overcome. <laughs> Go finish this current bite and let out a satisfied sigh. All right. I'll stuff for now. There's other stuff to do and I can have more later. You smiled at him, relieved that your gift could be enjoyed and not inhaled. You rubbed your hands together before piping up. We could do your surprise now, too. <laughs> Co laughed. Yours was a better surprise for sure. It was a real one, but yeah. He grinned broadly as if the, as if the exchange had fired him up yeah, even further. I'm definitely going to take you out now. <laughs> Co offered you his hand. You welcomed it, yeah. <laughs> you took his hand in yours, palm to palm. Go squeeze your hand before heading out the door, guiding you along. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> hand in hand, you wove down the stairs together, out of the house and into the neighborhood. Ghost's car was parked nearby. He unlocked it, allowing you to reach your regular spot in the passenger seat. Go paused to put what remained of his presence safely away before hopping into the driver's seat. He set off, beginning your trip to the third and final activity of Coast Grand Happiness Plan. You settled in fully for the trip out to the aquarium in the city. It would be a bit of a drive, but you didn't mind. You made an attempt to start a conversation. It's kind of funny we've never done this before now. Why haven't we? Mm. Probably because I've never thought about going to the aquarium with anyone before this. Really? You've never gone to the aquarium ever? Yep, that's right. Never. And not just this specific one either. I haven't been to an aquarium, period. Wow. That might be brand new for Cope, but you'd been to this aquarium before. That made two of you. You hadn't been to the aquarium either. Um... Yeah, sure. Let's go see the aquarium. Our family had other priorities for their rare trips out uh, to the city. It didn't feel like a big deal that you hadn't gone to the aquarium, but it, uh, it still felt weird that Cove hadn't gone to the trouble before. Um... Do you, uh, do you not actually like them? Go tap the tips of his fingers against the steering wheel, his face uh, scrunching in contemplation. When I, was, when I was growing up, my dad did try to take me. I'd never been before because I was so little. I said no. <sighs> Whenever he tried to talk about it, I told my dad I'd rather go to the actual beach on my own. 
Or he could at least take me to the fish part of the pet store, but not the aquarium. Eventually, he didn't ask about it anymore. He must have figured I had something against it. When he stopped mentioning the aquarium, I stopped thinking about it. it. just never came back to my mind. His expression shifted to one of bemused confusion. The thing is, I don't know what I had against it, if I did have a problem. Maybe I didn't like the idea of seeing water I wasn't allowed to go in, or to meet fish I could never bring home. That sounds like the kind of thing little me would have, might have gotten upset over. Or maybe I just wasn't okay with doing a new kind of trip. It'd, it'd be to some place new and with only my dad. Mom wouldn't be there anymore. I guess. I guess that might have made it seem not worth doing right off the bat. That's eight-year-old me for you. Go shook his head with a pained smile, then his tone dropped to a distant whisper. It was only when thinking about stuff I could do with you that I finally remembered I could go to an aquarium. Oh. He pulled his mouth into a bent smile and straightened his shoulders. He didn't want to bring the mood down. It all worked out in the end because I got to really surprise you with the news, huh? <laughs> yeah, you totally got me there. You're adorable. I hope <laughs> I hope it'll be worth it. Now, I'm excited we'll both be uh, going there for the first time together. Thank you for thinking of me. He quietly nodded, though he couldn't see it while driving. Yeah, you totally got me there. It was a long game if I've ever uh, if I've ever seen one. The conversation continued on with idle chatter about what you'd do when you got there. See fish, probably. <laughs> then the large angular building it, uh, decorated with ocean themed cutouts came into view. You'd arrived at your destination. Take a bomb picture and post it to Twitter if you're me in any case. <laughs> I genuinely like the pi that picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, you'd arrive at your destination. You hopped out of the car and headed over to the imposingly large guest entranceway. Goof's head uh, sobbled around to let his curious eyes take in every view, and you weren't even inside yet. Uh, you could see the realization of what he'd been missing out on dawn on him in real time. Uh, Coop bounced on the balls of his feet as the two of you stood in line to get tickets. His excitement continued to build. Aquariums are so pretty because this kind of like dark kind of blue like light ambience is so soothing and then like the f and then just like looking at all like different types of fish and then like you have the jellyfish stuff oh my god so pretty when you finally were face to face with the tanks you could hear Coke quietly gasp from your side he briskly took some large strides to get further into the Ooh into the room and to get closer to the glass barrier there he stood still after taking a moment for himself he whipped around to look at you Coop was outright vibrating with excitement his mouth opened in a large smile but all that came out was a tiny uh was tiny squeaking giggles it it bubbled over into full-on giddy laughter before he was able to speak in earnest each word was full of joy it's amazing i love it here of it too, of course you do. You have to laugh at his obvious conclusion. I'm really glad. This is going to be a tiring day, but it's good. He shook your head in amusement. <laughs> really glad. He cheered back without hesitation. Yeah, the aquarium is great. The two of you wasted no time before rushing around the place. You went ev every which way across the aquarium. This is so cute. Go was enthralled by each new sight. His eyes uh, alight like a kid in a candy store, and a perpetual smile made its home on his uh, made its home on its on his face. No metaphorical stone was left unturned. He viewed all the tanks from his tall uh, from his tallest of heights on tippy toes, as well as crouching as low to the floor as he could manage. Your exuberance was just as bright as his, buoyed further by how happy you were that he had found such happiness. You beamed. After making an entire trip through the whole building, you and Co finally slowed the pace down. You had arrived back at the original viewing room. It was a good spot for a break. Co stood quietly near the tank in almost the same spot as he had uh, as he had when he first took in the view. Somehow that moment already felt like a long time ago. You weren't sure if he was feeling the same way. Co simply watched the watery world inside inside with open fondness. He would he wouldn't get tired of that view ever. You were certain of that. You walked up to stand by him, taking in the same otherworldly experience of having a sea right in front of you. Suddenly, Cove swallowed hard, your head tilted. He wasn't looking at you, his eyes were glued to the vast ocean view in front of him. But his bright red face reflected clearly in, in the floor uh, in the floor to ceiling glass pane separating aquarium goers from the water. 
You couldn't understand. Nothing had happened. Then realization came. This was Kov. He was flustered because he was thinking about doing something. Kov always got that way when he was mentally building himself up. You immediately averted your case as though you might be caught watching something you weren't supposed to see. Uh, you were. Uh, you would simply let Kov have a moment. Hopefully, he'd be ready to talk again soon, you thought. I, uh... Uh, so, there's a lot of fish in here, huh? Uh, yeah? His mouth comes shut after those big, uh, stuttered words. You could feel a tension growing. After a breathless pause, he spoke again. <laughs> okay, I got it. You know, if you were a fish, you'd be paradise fish because being with you is like being in paradise. Melting. <laughs> I'm out. No, I'm out. No, I need you. I'm out. No. Go press his forehead against the glass with his eyes wide and gaze down as he fervently refused to even peek at the uh, what reaction you might be given. He was blushing wildly, feeling unparalleled embarrassment over the line he had just dropped. <laughs> this is the most realistic one! <laughs> I'm just... Uh... You thought it might be good that it was uh, something of a rare occasion for Cove to be that direct. It was a lot for you. You had plenty of fish name knowledge up your sleeve to use for this too. You're- Oh my god, can I pull another one? Well, if you were a fish, you'd be a diamond edra because you're a treasure on fish. A silver dollar, especially 20 silver dollars. You know why. Because, I uh, mean, at least hopefully you will be. Sunrise Guppy, because you're my adorable ray of sunshine. Teardrop Butterfly, you're a lot. Oh my god, please. I just wanted to see the options, sorry. These three, top. Also this one. But I'm going with the intro because you're a treasure. Oh. I had to. I had to. He continued to speak after his initial exclamation, but it was so mumbled you weren't sure what it was. Go had completely lost control of the conversation that he started, and he did not know what to do about that. Ultimately, he settled for turning his burning face away from you even more, as well as covering a cheek with a hand for good measure, leaving him speechless and you feeling rather pleased. After that, Go wanted to go around the aquarium again. He hoped to let it all sink in at a more leisurely pace while you were here. Plus, he desperately wanted more time to settle down after his latest big attempt at flirting. <laughs> the two of you began your second loop down the paths. It took no time at all to become absorbed in the incredible sea life once more. There wasn't nearly enough time in a single day to satisfy Cove's desire to exist inside of the aquarium, but the day did, it did have to end eventually. Despite obviously wanting to linger longer, Cove left the building with a skip in his step. It had been a good trip. The two of you shut the, uh, the doors of Coast Car behind you as you took your usual seats. The clicking of seatbelts punctuated the end of the adventure. <sighs> I would absolutely do that again. No kidding? <laughs> Coke chuckled as he pulled the car out of the parking spot, spirits still as high as ever. On the return leg of the journey, you felt Cove lapse deep into a world of thought. Typically, even when conversation was exhausted, his eyes would flick to you occasionally and you'd exchange smiles and other such gestures, which is so sweet. This time, his, fo his focus was uh, split purely between the road and the recesses of his mind. But as there was no sign of trouble on his features, so, uh, but as there was no trouble, uh, sign of trouble on his features, so you were happy to let him mull over whatever he, need he needed to in peace. The trip drifted in, in a comfortable silence. Before long, you were back in the neighborhood. You each uh, left through your respective sides and Cove stepped around the vehicle to stand with you. Wordlessly, he gestured to your home. He was intending to take you there. Perhaps he felt the trip wasn't fully, uh, truly over until you were literally inside your house. <laughs> you contently continued to go with Cove on his whims and you went inside. Once under the light of your living room lamps, his eyes locked onto yours. Thank you. I know all this... Uh, all of this was a lot, but I really did have so much fun. 
He grinned in an almost conspiratorial way. We really did it. This whole entire dumb plan of mine. I was happy it all became a reality. I hope you're happy too. Yes, I am. I've never been happier. All I want is for you to be happy. Well, I felt worse. Do you not seriously? Yes, I am. The smack he wore was small, but even restrained compared to some of the grins he'd flashed earlier, but it was imbued with a calm, comfort, uh, comforting contentment. In this moment, he was as joyful as you'd ever seen him. His next, word escaped, uh, his next words escaped in a whisper. No one makes me feel the way you do. But he moved the conversation along before you had a chance to react to that admission, which- OH MY GOD! <laughs> oh, it had to be intentional. Oh, cause I don't have so much to say to that or just freak out about it. Ace. Oh. Um, could I ask, ask for you to come along with one more surprise? His voice was gen gentle even as he implored you for a little more. The question itself was a surprise. Another? You could hardly believe that there was even more hidden up his sleeve. Go chuckled quietly, nodding his head ever so slightly. A new one. I think I don't want to go home already. Not yet. And going back to one of our usual spots sounds fantastic after all this new stuff we went through. This is so adorable! I can't do this! <sighs> Your hand lifted up to his face to caress his cheek. Yeah, I'd like to stay with you a little longer, though coming from you, that request isn't much of a surprise. You mirrored his delicate smile with one of your own. This is so cute! <sighs> yeah. You're right. I'm bad at surprises. What a surprise. The irony is not lost. <laughs> the two of you laughed together over the silliness of this entire mini-adventure Go had concocted. Thanks for saying yes, anyway. You walked down your usual path, side by side and hand in hand. You trotted the same path many times. By all nights, the novelty should have been long gone, but you found fulfillment in every step you took. You were sure you always would, with Cove supporting you along the way. Whether he was near or far, it didn't matter in the end. He would always be there for you. With this plan of Cove's drawing to a close, you might have expected to feel a little wistful. It had been an exciting few days, but there was no need to yearn for what had gone. After all, you knew that the two of you would always find uh, new ways to bring a smile to the other's face. It's what you both did, and you were looking forward to new surprises already. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that it can draw over the fact that I'm not going to be able to finish the, all the moments. I'm so happy that it's even clouding this that. <laughs> was that even real? Like, that was amazing. Uh, <laughs> I am so single. <laughs> oh my god, that was so adorable. Oh, I loved it so much. That was so sweet. It brought in so many curves that I was, wasn't expecting. But it was so sweet. Oh, that was adorable. <laughs> oh, it was the sweetest thing. <laughs> I'm like still I'm like mentally going on. I'm like I'm like glow white flashbacking in my head right now <laughs> I'm white glow a flashback in my head at the moment <sighs> Wonderful wonderful. I love it so much. So sadly We're not gonna be able to finish all the moments with step three. We're gonna be missing drive um, but yeah Whoops it happens. I guess whoops <laughs> <laughs> but that was such a good one that I can't even buy as that. I am my past this time I spent on happiness because it was so good. 
It's- I get a pass. I get a pass. The same way I got a pass on taking so long on reflection because I was crying the entire time, I can get a pass on taking so long on happiness because I was just awing and just freaking out the entire time. <laughs> pass. I got a free pass for taking a while on that. This is October, it's prime time to change that and be oh so taken, I guess. Yeah, I know. The, the dream is to fall in love in October. We all know that the dream is to fall in love in October. But, uh, who knows? This is life, life's hard, I guess. Tough break. Even, I, I just have to, do I have to just will it into existence? No, I actually have to leave the house by myself and meet people, don't I? Damn. I have to meet people. <laughs> Damn, this whole dating thing is way more difficult. <sighs> regardless, regardless, I guess it's fine. <laughs> Until then, dating sim oils are great. <laughs> Uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's do this, and let's get ready to end this off. So, tomorrow we're actually gonna do something different, I know, shocker. Um, yeah, I decided to switch it up for a bit, because we're, like, nearing the end at this point. Like, we're nearing the end of step three, we'll do step three, we'll do step four, um, the wedding. So, we're slowly starting to age towards the end. Probably still got a couple streams of us left. Uh, considering sometimes we get through, so, sometimes we get through just two, uh, like, moments. So, it happens. Uh, it really depends. It really depends. So we still have, uh, it to get through, but since we're near the end a little bit, and since we spent basically all last week on this, I, uh, yeah. It's better to switch it up a bit. So we're gonna be playing Cult of the Lamb, uh, tomorrow, which is fun, exciting, yay. So I'll see you here for that. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you have a good night as well. And I hope you have a great day tomorrow until we see each other again here tomorrow. Yeah? Yeah. Good night, day, sleep well, and dream of having an amazing day with Cove and giving each other gifts. Yes. Yes, I shall. Let's find a good ending song. We are going with... What's a good one? What's a good, good, good one? This is a good, good, good one, I think. When it loads. Yeah? Yeah! Ace, you can do what I did and fall in love with someone who lives far away and you can't meet up with them IRL. No need for leaving the house then. True. I still need to meet people that way, though. <laughs> Still need to meet. I still need to meet people that way. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> regardless, regardless, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you have a good night as well. I hope you have a great day tomorrow as well. <laughs> and they have someone else will have more luck with uh, finding love in October than I probably would. <laughs> Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.